Okay. I say hi. Uh, are you ready? Are staff ready? Is Adrian on? She must be. We'll wait for her. Chair, can you hear me? Oh, there you are. I'm here. Sorry, I stepped away for just a sec. Adrian, do you have Sonia? Adrian, I think you're muted if you're there. This should be fun. Go, Madam Chair. Yay! <laughs> I think this should still be your job. <laughs> we could have made, it, made him stay, but I don't I just made, I didn't make us like stop just... commenting at all and just disappear in the middle of the meeting. No, that's not good. Fade into the black. <laughs> You're with us at least till the bitter end tonight, my friend. <laughs> when the cots start coming out, I'm going to disappear. I float off into a, on a cloud somewhere. I'm assuming Andrew went to find Adrian. No, Rhonda, I'm up in my office. Okay. Um, so Andy, is is Adrian with you in Chambers or home or she is in Chambers? Okay. Is she ready for us to go? We can't hear her. Okay. And we can't hear you. I can't hear Andy. <laughs> I can see your mask moving. Does that help? <laughs> <laughs> oh man well we have 58 participants um so i don't know where adrian is though and i don't know if sonia's on yet looks like they must be having some challenges with the audio yeah we will wait patiently as if we have a choice. No. <laughs> Unless you want to just table the whole meeting, but I don't think that would be uh, accepted well. <laughs> Is that just too much color on my background? No, it looks good. But how do you add a background? You know, I can only do it for some reason on my laptop. And I think sometimes, I don't know if it comes up on my tablet or not, but you go into settings on your Zoom. Settings, yeah. Yeah, go to stop the little carrot next to the video button. And it brings up choose the virtual background. Oh, yeah. And you can load in pictures or use the pictures they already have. I literally am on this yeah. platform 28,000 hours a week. So <laughs> whatever you want to know, I could probably tell you. All right, Ryan, how do you put, how do you put an image up uh, uh, instead of your name? Uh, you have to go to your profile on Zoom, the website. You, okay. You log in on yourself on the website. 
Okay, so you have to do it through the website. Yep. Hey, everybody. Okay. Hey, Chris. We're having technical issues with the microphone, so we can hear you. You can't hear us, so right. we are rebooting the system and working on that right now. Okay. So hang Ryan, tight. Be... Ryan was just teaching us about, you know, changing our backgrounds. I heard. So it's a it's good lesson. You are live on YouTube, so don't give away too many secrets about, about Zoom calls. And we'll so, be right Chris, back. I'm going with this one, then. I like uh, it. Chris, yes. so Bill Parsons <laughs> just told me that Adrian needs to still add staff members as panelists. She will. She's okay. just struggling to get the sound. So okay. we, will, we will be back with you as soon as possible. Andrea, is it okay if I use this background for the evening? You sure can. <laughs> you sure time are you. <laughs> this, is my per this is my personal favorite. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little less color there. Here we go. Oh, you're having too much fun, Ryan. <laughs> I actually like that one. I like it too. Yeah, you too. Yeah, that's a good one. Madam Chair, is that out your backyard picture? Um, that was on my way to work one morning. That's actually going to going north on Ten Mile from Amity. Or you're driving to Walla Walla, admit it freely. You're going to drink wine in Walla Walla and you- No, no, you can see the Boise Mountain is a No, I love that picture, sunset. it's gorgeous. Sunrise, I guess, yeah. Oh, pretty. Does this mean that Commissioner Seal has to like translate everything the staff says via like sign language or something or post-it notes he holds up in front of the screen? Mm. Joys of technology. Yep. I just joined, this is Sonia, what's the issue? We're having mic problems. In the chambers? Yeah. Yeah, they're rebooting. Mm, okay. I was going to say, Sonia, for me, we, where do you want to start? I've got all kinds of issues, but we can. <laughs> <laughs> you need to see a paid professional for those. <laughs> I love it. Um, Madam Chair, did you get everything you needed from me? Um, uh, Lisa had sent it just a little before that, so I haven't looked at yours yet. Okay. Well, as, as long as you have what you need. Yeah, hopefully what I sent you works. Yeah, well, it's going to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was delayed in getting you some notes there. No, no I was I was at the Capitol building all day, so I, I wasn't able to get to my computer as quickly as I wanted to. Yeah, no, I walked in and sat down for one meeting and got off of that just minutes before this one. So I haven't even had time to really look at these. <laughs> So we'll see how I read it. <laughs> if it all comes back, I'd say if it all comes back to me, but it's all the uh, intro is different now with Zoom. 
whatever you were, say will be great. Yep. Yep. Is it really? I guess I'll just say this. Uh, we they said we're live on YouTube, so if people have turned into this meeting on YouTube, we're just waiting for technical difficulties to be solved. So we'll hopefully be with everybody shortly and start soon. Andy, how well do you know sign language? You just signed to us the whole time. Unfortunately, I don't know sign language, so I probably wouldn't be able to understand what you wrote back anyway. It's really frustrating. I, can only, I hate that, that I can only see. Oh, here, now I got a grid. There we go. I think this is the biggest holdup we've had all year with remote for PNZ. Yeah, definitely for PNZ. Have yeah. you had any other uh, meetings that had issues? No, we we just had a little glitchy, like one of our first ones. It was just glitchy audio. I mean, we were like elevator music. Do you remember that, Lisa? Just popped on and started playing at like 9.30 yep. at night. And it was just like- I do remember that. What? <laughs> so that one was kind of odd, um, but- not this kind of a delay and it's unfortunate because it's a you know, longer agenda today but
I'm guessing we probably have quite a few folks in chambers too. I'm not there, so I don't know. So IT gets a place. Madam Chair, can you hear me? Yes, you yes. can now. Okay, we're just gonna go through my laptop until we have um, other provisions. Okay. So bear with us for just a quick minute here while we get plugged in so we don't run out of juice. You and let me know when you're ready. Okay, I'm just going to kind of read the roll over Commissioner Seal's shoulder when you're ready. Okay. I can't hear, can you? Yeah, we didn't hear you when you walked away, Adrian. Um, that was feedback from another computer. So okay. um, we are ready when you are. Okay. All right. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting for January 21st, 2021 via Zoom and in person. Uh, the commissioners who are present this evening uh, are at City Hall and on Zoom. And we also have staff from the city attorney and the clerk's office and planning department with us as well. If you're joining us on Zoom this evening, you may observe the meeting and we can see that you were there. However, your ability to talk will and be seen will be muted. Uh, during the public testimony portion of the meeting, you will be unmuted and able to comment. If you have previously sent a presentation for the meeting, it will be displayed on the screen and the clerk will run the presentation. If you simply want to watch the meeting, we encourage you to watch this streaming on the city YouTube channel. Uh, you can access it at meridiancity.org forward slash live. Uh, we will begin, we will open each item individually and begin with the staff report. The staff will report their findings on how the item adheres to our comprehensive plan and the uniform development code. After staff has made their presentation, the applicant will come forward to present their case and respond to staff comments. They will have 15 minutes to do so. After the applicant has finished, we'll open the floor to public testimony. When the public testimony is open, the clerk will call the names individually of those who have signed up to testify on our website. Uh, you will then be unmuted. Please state your name and address for the record and you will have three minutes to address the commission unless you are representing a larger group like an HOA. After that time, we may ask you some questions for clarification, but once you're done, you will be muted and no longer have the ability to speak. Uh, once all of those who have signed up in advance are called. We will invite others who wish to testify. If you wish to speak on the topic, you may press the raise hand button on the Zoom app, or if you are only listening through a cell phone or landline, you can press star nine. Wait for your name to be called. If you are listening on multiple devices, a computer or a phone and a phone, et cetera, please be sure and mute those devices so you don't experience feedback and everyone can hear you clearly. Please note that we cannot take questions until the public testimony portion. If you have a process question during the meeting, please email cityclerk at meridiancity.org and they will be able to help you as quickly as possible. With all that being said, let's begin with roll call. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Holland. Here. Commissioner Grove. Here. Commissioner Yearsley. Here. Commissioner Seal. Here. Commissioner Casanelli. Here. Commissioner Fitzgerald. Here. Commissioner McCarville. Here. Okay, thank you. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Um, and it, I think it, no changes. We have um, item number two uh, is the applicant is requesting a continuance and staff will inform us on that. So um, at this time, could I get a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. So moved. Second. It has been moved and seconded to adopt the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. And uh, we just have approval of minutes uh, for the January 7th, 
2021 Planning and Zoning Commission regular meeting. Um, so could I get a mo motion to accept the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Second. It has been moved and seconded to adopt the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Um, so at this time, um, we'd like to conti uh, continue on from December 3rd, 2020, uh, TM Center H2020-0074. Um, the applicant is requesting a continuance. Um, and so if we could have some comments from staff. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Um, yeah, the, the applicant would prefer to continue this to the February 18th hearing. Um, staff is um, recommending that it be continued to a later date to run concurrently with the um, upcoming planned unit development and development agreement modification applications for the same property. Um, this was the reason this application was originally um, pulled back to begin with so that it could be um, reviewed comprehensively as an overall um, project, as is the uh, street sections that are proposed with the preliminary plat and actually some have been constructed are not consistent with the 10 mile plan. And there are changes to the, um, some of the guidelines in the 10 mile plan um, that are anticipated to be incorporated into a new development agreement, uh, master DA for the overall site. So, so that's the reason um, staff would prefer to process this all together. Um, staff will stand for any questions. Madam Chair. Commissioner Fitzgerald. Sonia, what date are you looking for? Well, I think that the uh, second meeting in March would probably be the safest. Um, that would be the uh, 18th. Um, but I don't know, the applicant may be able to provide more information on when they anticipate the additional items being submitted for those other two applications I referenced. Um, if, if it's gonna be submitted soon then staff doesn't have an issue with the march 4th meeting then that would only delay it a couple more weeks than what they're what they'd really wanted to get on thank you madam chair commissioner holland follow-up to commissioner fitzgerald's question do we have a lot on the agenda for the 4th or the 18th madam chair this is adrian currently we do not i don't believe i'm away from my computer trying to fix some technical issues but uh, we don't have more than two, I think, for the fourth, and I don't think we've noticed anything for the 18th yet. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Um, would the applicant like to address the commission? Madam Chair, that might take us a minute to see if he's online. Okay. Part of our, part of our reboot was it took away our guest list. Okay. Um, we'll wait. Madam Chair. Mr. Fitzgerald. I, I mean, I know you all have a pretty significant uh, lineup for February. I, I know looking at what you have on a docket for the next two meetings is relatively significant. So um, I, I would say, <laughs> I think I would suggest if we're going to do something, we push it at least till that first meeting in March, if not to that, where the staff thinks they can align everything. Agreed. I, I'm personally, uh, I like to err on the side of staff and not rush them. Madam Chair, I'd be happy to make a motion unless we need to hear from the applicant. I didn't catch all that. Sorry. I didn't either. Put it through this. Madam Chair, we're trying to test our sound again. Chris is going to talk through the microphone and see if you can hear him. Okay. Is Chris trying to see if you can hear me through the sound? Yes. Why 
We're going to pause for one moment, connect everything over, and make sure you can still hear us. Okay, thank you. Yeah, at this point, I think I'd be um, supportive of the March 18th date. As Can I make a motion? Requested. Or do we need to hear from the applicant? Madam Chair, Commissioners, my apologies for all the technical difficulties we're having right now. Um, to pick up where we left off, I cannot locate anybody from the applicant. Okay. Um, team online if they are online and you wish for them to talk I just ask for them to raise their hand so I can identify them okay if the applicant is here for H 2020-0074 if they could please raise their hand to be noticed by the clerk okay I would say a motion is in order. Madam Chair. Commissioner Holland. I move we continue um, item number H-2020-0074 for TM Center to the hearing date of March 18th to allow staff uh, more time to work with the applicant on supporting materials for the application. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded to continue H-2020-0074 to the date of March 18th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Um, next item on the agenda is H-2020-001, uh, I'm sorry, dash 0119. Uh, the Mark Enos annexation. Uh, we'll begin with the staff report. Good evening, Planning Commission. Can you see my presentation and can you hear me? Thumbs up. Great. Alan Tiefenbach, Planner with the City of Meridian. Again, good evening. Uh, this is an annexation and a zoning. Uh, the site consists of an acre of land. It's zoned R1 and unincorporated Ada County. It's located at 2972 East Leslie, which is south and west of the East Eustick Road, North Eagle Road intersection. Property is bordered on uh, two sides by the city limits. To the north is R15, to the east is R2, unincorporated Ada County to the south and to the west. Comprehensive plan recommends this for a low density residential. Uh, this is a proposal to annex and rezone one acre of property to R2 to obtain city services. The property is in unincorporated Ada County and is served by an individual well and septic. I'll put the site plan up here. 
Uh, the, the applicant desires to construct a detached uh, accessory building for a, of an approximately 1,750 square foot. That's what you see here on the north, and that would be for a shop, RV garage, and upstairs living. The applicant's been unable to obtain a new septic permit from the county. They want to add a, a living space above. They've been unable to uh, obtain a septic permit for the addition due to the location and the limitations of the existing system. So the, where the system is located and where there's a ditch, they can't expand the system easily. Uh, the county has recommended that the applicant uh, annex into the city. The, annex is, the applicant has determined it would be cheaper to do this than to try to upgrade the whole system. That's the reason for this annexation. Uh, if, the, if the applicant chooses to use the upstairs living area as a secondary dwelling unit, it's subject to a specific use standards, which includes the living area being less than 700 square feet, uh, one additional parking space, and the property having to be occupied at least six months out of the year by the primary occupant. Comprehensive plan is supportive of the secondary dwelling unit. There's recommendations in the plan that support the construction of accessory dwelling units, uh, as well as increasing the diversity of housing. So again, the only reason for this is for the applicant to be able to obtain city services so they can build this second building. With that, staff recommends approval if you have any questions. Madam Chair, this is Bill. Yeah, do we have any, yeah. Sorry, I was muted. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm just, I'm curious on the, uh, uh, the uh, condition for uh, owner occupied for at least six months out of the year, is that uh, city code on that? Yeah, correct. I think the intent of that is so that somebody remotely doesn't just try to Airbnb everything out and to make sure that there's somebody on site that if it is used for a secondary dwelling unit, there's some eyes on the property and it's not all just a renter. So yes, that is the city code six months out of the year. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Uh, would the applicant like to speak? If you're in the on Zoom, please raise your hand. Oh, there we go. Adrian, do you see him? Am I unmuted okay. now? Thank yep. You. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yes. Hi. Please go this, ahead. State your name and address for the record. This is Mark Enos, address uh, 2972 East Leslie Drive in Meridian. And um, no, I don't, I don't have anything to add unless there's specific questions. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? I'm sure. Mr. Fitzgerald. Just really quick, uh, Mr. Enos, are, how are you accessing that? secondary dwelling do you have a, a driveway you're adding to your lawn sure on the right side of the property there's already a, a gravel driveway that accesses the back of the property and, th and that's on your property yep okay yep. perfect that just that uh, was a question for me thank you appreciate it And um, do we have any uh, sign anyone signed up to testify on this application? I'm chair, we do not. Okay. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to testify on this? Please raise your hand. Okay. No one in chambers either, Madam Chair. Um, so um, I think at this time, if I could get a motion to close the public hearing for Item H-20, sorry, lost them. Madam Chair. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Fitzgerald. Can I, I make a move, or I move that we close public hearing on H-2020-0119, uh, Mark Enos annexation. Commissioner Holland seconds. It's been moved and seconded to close the public hearing. All those in, and second on, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Um, uh, 
any other discussion on this? I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, Madam no Chair, mm -hmm. this is a pretty simple one. I I appreciate they they're wanting to add an additional dwelling unit. I think there's space there, and and if the Ada, if Ada County can't service them through a and a, a, a new um, well and septic, um, then I think hooking up the city services is appropriate. So if anybody has a problem, let us know. If not, I'll make a motion. Always in order. Uh, Madam Chair, after considering all staff, applicant and public testimony, I move to recommend approval to the city council of file number H29 or 2020-0119 as presented in the staff report for the hearing date of January 21st, 2021. Commissioner seconds. It has been moved and seconded to approve H-2020-0119. Uh, recommend approval. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, anne the Shenbley annexation H-2020-0115 uh, and we'll begin with the staff report. Thank you Madam Chair. Whoops. Can you all hear me? Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. I thought I was muted. <laughs> uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Uh, the next application before you is a request for annexation and zoning. This site consists of 0.63 of an acre of land. It's currently zoned RUT in Ada County, and it's located at 2690 East Franklin Road. The comprehensive plan future land use map designation on this property is commercial. The applicant is proposing to annex 0.75 of an acre of land and that goes to the section line of East Franklin Road as required by our zoning uh, with an R2 low density residential zoning district. The reason for annexation is that the existing septic system on the single family residential property failed la late last year and the applicant had to hook up to city water and sewer service. No new development or redevelopment of the property is proposed at this time and the use will remain residential for the foreseeable future. As a provision of hookup to city services, annexation into the city is required. The comprehensive plan future land use map designation for this property is commercial. Because there is an existing home on the property and the use is proposed to remain residential, an R2 zoning district is requested as recommended by staff as a placeholder zoning district until the property redevelops or a change of use in the property um, is proposed in the future. At such time, the property should be rezoned and the use uh, development should be consistent with the commercial future land use map designation. To ensure future development is consistent with the comprehensive plan, staff does recommend a development agreement is required as a provision of annexation that requires the property to be rezoned and the agreement modified to include a conceptual development plan consistent with the commercial designation prior to any change in use or redevelopment of the property. This would not prevent the applicant from selling the property for continued residential use, but would preclude it from being subdivided to increase the density on the property and further the residential use of the property. Written testimony has been received from Brad Miller from Adler Industrial. He has uh, concerns pertaining to compatibility of R2 zoning of the property with adjacent industrial uses to the north and suggests commercial zoning might be more compatible and a better option. Um, I did um, touch base with Mr. Miller and did explain that this is just a placeholder zoning that's requested and supported by staff. Um, anyway, just to explain that, um, staff is recommending approval of the requested annexation with R2 zoning and the requirement of a development agreement as previously mentioned. Staff will stand for any questions. Madam Mr. Chair. Mr. McCarville, or oh, I mean, Madam yeah, Chair. There we go. Uh, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Holland, I think you started first. Either way, um, Sonia, just one quick question. With uh, the comment that came in from uh, Brad Miller, is if they have a R2 designation, does it impact them any way on the industrial side of things with setbacks or anything like that? Because I know sometimes there's 
additional setbacks requirements for residential zone properties next to industrial areas? Or is there a way that in the development agreement, it could be noted that um, they would be exempt from those traditional setbacks because it's planned to be commercial in the future? Well, I believe that the, I'm just double checking that. I believe that the industrial uses to the, the industrial property to the north is already improved. Um, and therefore nothing additional would be required. If the site were to redevelop with new uses, then yes, a, a buffer to residential uses is required. So follow up to that, do we, if it is all developed, then probably no concern, but if somebody was to come in and do another industrial use, is there a way we can put that note in the development agreement or the staff report that it's a placeholder zoning and the typical buffers wouldn't apply because we're gonna follow the notes of the future use map for that site? Um, I'll defer to legal on that, but I don't believe so. The, the development or the requirement would, would be on the property under development and it is based on the zoning district of the property under, under development. So I believe it would apply in, in either case. Agreed. Commissioner Fitzgerald. Um, Sonia, did Brad have a response to your comment? Did he give you feedback? Well, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he seemed okay with that explanation. And, and yes, I can see from the aerial that that property to the north is um, currently developed. He, he represents the property owner to the north. Adler Industrial. Got it. Okay. I think he just wanted to comment to be on the record. Any other questions for staff? Commission, this is Bill. Uh, yes, go ahead. I was going to also let the commission know that the two vacant parcels there have also been approved by the city to, to develop industrial uses. So it'll be a fabrication shop and some outdoor storage. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions for staff? We'll move forward with the applicant. It, um, I don't see the applicant in the Zoom audience. Do we have the applicant in chambers, Commissioner Seal? Madam Chair, it looks like I do have somebody uh, raising their hand. Okay. Them to talk for a moment. Okay. Okay. And I assume is this Mr. Shenbley? You're on mute, sir, if you're You'll need to unclick your mute. I think you have the permission to talk if you unmute your your side. There you go. Can, can you hear me now, Madam Chair? Yes, there you go. Please state I, your name I'm, and address for the record. I'm, I'm learning how to work this. Uh, my name is <laughs> Rich. <all> are. <laughs> my name is uh, Rich Schnebley. And my, uh, do you want my home address or the address of the property I own? My home address is 4050 East Hubbard Road, CUNA. Eight three six three four. Okay. Thank you. It, is there anything you'd like to share with us about your application? Uh, no, I, I I believe it's pretty straightforward. Uh, my one concern that I had after being given the staff report, and I will have to tell you that Sonia has been very patient with me throughout this whole process and that she's tried very hard to make sure I understand things, but still um, this is very new to me and trying to work through all the ins and outs of this project have been uh, uh, somewhat um, overwhelming. But anyway, um, the one thing that I had after the staff report was this uh, uh, DA that uh, this development agreement that you wanted me to sign or apparently is required and never having seen one or whatever, I was very, very concerned over what obligations it would put to me, what kind of uh, 
um, legal uh, stuff that I would be required to do and that this is kind of something you guys apparently need or want. And I've questioned the necessity of it because it just seemed most everything in there is kind of a given. You know, if the, if the house changes hands at some point down the road, I certainly don't have any things, but if it's sold to somebody that's a commercial developer, I mean, however it's zoned or whatever, don't, don't they still have to come in front of you guys to get it rezoned for commercial use and come with a plan? Um, I'm somewhat uncertain um, why the development plan even needs to be in place uh, and the fact that um, I get charged for the privilege of signing it. Um, Sony, do you want to respond? Um, I'm sorry. I was tending to a technical difficulty and I did not catch that question. I apologize. Um, Mr. Shinobi is wants further explanation on why he needs the DA agreement. Um, Madam, can I interrupt there just a second? Sure. Uh, so, Sony and I had a pretty good discussion last night via email, and she tried her best to um, explain the necessity of it and the requirement of it. And again, I understand it, but I, I still have a little bit of um, resistance, I guess. So if you guys really feel that it's a necessity, the one thing is, is I just happened to notice on one of the other um, applications that you had that in the staff report, you have a zoning of R1. I only put a zoning recommendation of R2 in there because it was one of the recommendations Sonia put out in the pre-planning meeting that we had to go forward for my project. And would a, a, a zoning of R1, would that help better that it could only be a single family dwelling on that acreage? Uh, and maybe a development plan wouldn't be needed. Uh, but at the same time, if you guys do feel that you do need to put the development agreement together and it is required, I'll go forward with it. But I guess the one thing I could ask of you is, I don't know if you have it within your power to maybe waive the fees um, for having to put that uh, together because I still have to go forward this spring. This project has been enormously expensive for me and not planned and has been uh, kind of a financial burden to me at the moment. So the 300 bucks or whatever that was being required to, to put this agreement together could be, be better used this spring because I have to totally re-renovate my entire front yard on that property that got tore up in this project. And that money I think could certainly be better used to, to put things back together again this spring. So that's my comments. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'll let you guys go forward. Um, Madam Chair, um, if I could respond to Mr. Schnebley's suggestion for R1 zoning. Uh, the city does not have an R1 zoning. Um, R1 is a county designation. Um, the lowest um, density zoning designation the city has is R2. So that's why staff recommended that zone. Okay. Thank you. Um, I guess at this time, uh, do we have any further staff comments from Bill? Sure, I, I'm yeah. listening to the conversation. So I think this body is aware and also for Mr. Schneebly. Uh, certainly we don't want to put undue burdens on homeowners or people that just want to hook up and, and honor their commitments with the city. But this site is a little bit different. We we're, we're actually have a comprehensive plan designation of commercial, but we're recommending a residential zone to help assist with his need to annex in. And that's really our standard process. So the, the state statutes enable staff to require a contract with annexations and rezone. So that once he's right though, they technically he could come back through whoever buys the property can come back through and rezone it and then at that time, the city through our process could require a development agreement or amendment to the DA if, if you guys choose to do that. 
the city does not have a fee waiver process anymore. We modified the code a few years ago and took that out. Um, the council at the time that had determined that, you know, it, it just doesn't set a good precedence to uh, be waiving fees for applications because there's staff time involved. There's, there's only so many different staff members touching these applications. But what I can recommend to this commission is certainly the city has the ability to get some other assurances with the rezone. Uh, but to me, it's really a council's decision. They're the ones that are gonna be making the decision on the land use. So if that's something that the commission feels is appropriate in this case, then I would forward on a recommendation of the annexation without the inclusion of a development agreement. Um, that's certainly something you can do and see whether or not council would support that recommendation. Okay. Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Fitzgerald. So Bill, we can't recommend that anything that on that property that comes back has to go through the process again. We can't make that determination in a DA. Oh, sure you can. Um, you, you you always have the, that's what a DA mod is, right? Yeah. If you put a DA in place, yes, the, the avenue to change that contract is to go before city council. Yeah. So that, yeah. that's my one concern about not putting a DA in place is that comes back and it still remains residential down the road where it's supposed to, where I think it's commercial zone. Correct. Or industrial zone. So that would be my concern about that. Yeah. The long-term vision for this property is commercial and we don't want the residential, not that it's, it can't continue, but the intent is not for that to be residential forever. Madam chair. One more question Hall. for staff. If we condition it so that um, they don't have a development agreement, can we still make a condition at, through annexation that they're not allowed to subdivide the property in the future? Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. To a DA. Yeah, um, where'd Sonia go? <laughs> <laughs> Madam <laughs> Chair, members of the commission. Um, the state code does not allow annexations to be conditioned. The only method we have of doing that is through the development agreement right. process and agreement. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thanks for yeah. clarifying. And I think it just helps everybody be clear, you know, a future purchaser it just helps things from slipping through the cracks. So, um, okay. If, uh, any more comments, uh, from the applicant, I think we still have you who are answering your questions and staffs at this point. Uh, am I still on with you? Yes. Okay, I, I certainly understand. Um, and like I said, Sonia has been very, very patient with me and tried to explain it to the best of her ability last night to me. So I, and if you don't have the ability to waive uh, these anymore, um, I, I guess you, I'll have to accept what you move forward with and go from there. Right now, I'm just trying to honor my commitment to you that um, of annexation because all my permits were issued early on so that we could get the house back up and habitable because I have people living in it and they really needed to be able to use the system. So right. anyway, thank you very much for your time tonight. I do appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Is there uh, anybody in the audience who wishes to testify on this application or do we have anybody signed up? Sure, we do not. Please raise your hand, okay. Um, so at this time, if I could get a motion to close the public hearing for H-2020-0115. So moved. Second. It has been moved and seconded to close the public hearing for H-2020-0115. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Um, comments? Discussion? Madam Chair. We get a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, Mr. I think Carroll. my comments kind of float into what I said. I I, mean, I, I totally understand the, the challenges that come with attaching to uh, the city services. And um, this has, has to be, happens to be a unique property that we we see further commercial use on it. And I, I am, I'm sorry for the, the applicant situation. I, I know it's having a development agreement does cost money and, and, I, and I'm definitely um, sympathetic to that. I, the challenge is if if we don't do it and we and he sells that property or something changes with it, 
we can't control what happens after annexation. And so, uh, unfortunately, I think we got to have a development agreement go with it, in my opinion. So that would be my, my thought is that we attach it with an R2, that's fine, but that it has to come back through the process to get uh, redeveloped once that next steps happens with that property if it's redeveloped in the future. Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Holland. I would echo Commissioner Fitzgerald's comments. I, I wish that we had the ability to do a fee waiver because I would make that recommendation to council that they consider waiving the fee. Um, but if, if that's not a tool that we have available to us, I don't know if there's anything creative council can do to help them, but um, I think it's I think it's important to have that development agreement in place just because of it's a step away from the comprehensive plan that was designated for that property. I think the only other possibility, and I, I don't think this is an option either, is requesting the waiver of the fee on the comprehensive plan amendment. But that's the same same situation. We don't have that ability to change those fees. Agreed. I I do feel. I mean, it. We need the DA in place just for transparency for everyone involved. And as fast as things move here, it it could easily be forgotten. So, any other comments or motions, Madam Chair, Commissioner Holland? Um, unless there's other comments, I'll. I'll move, um, I'll make a motion. After hearing all staff applicant and public testimony, I move to recommend approval to city council um, file number H-2020-0115 for the Schnedley annexation uh, with the request that they would work with staff on a development agreement. Um, I think that might already be in the staff report, so maybe it doesn't need to be in motion. Yeah, I, I believe it's in there. Do we have a second? Second. It has been moved and seconded to recommend approval on H-2020-0115. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the public hearing for Village at Meridian Cafe Rio the drive through H-2020-0116. And we'll begin with staff report. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Uh, the next application before you is a request for a conditional use permit. This site consists of 0.97 of an acre of land, zone CG, located at 3243 East Village Drive. This property was annexed back in 2007 as part of the larger Village of Meridian project. A development agreement was required as a provision of annexation, which has been amended twice since that time. The comprehensive plan future land use map designation for this property is mixed use regional. A conditional use permit is requested for a drive-through establishment for Cafe Rio within 300 feet of another drive-through facility to the north, um, Chick-fil-A as required by the UDC. Cafe Rio is proposed to occupy the southern tenant space of a 10,000 square foot multi-tenant building. The existing drive-through is separated from the drive-through to the north by a public street, East Village Drive. Therefore, no traffic conflicts exist between the two sides. The proposed use is subject to specific use standards listed in UDC 11-4-3-11, drive-through establishment. Staff has reviewed the proposed site design and found it to be consistent with these standards. Access is proposed via a driveway from a right turn lane from Eagle Road on East Village Drive along the northern boundary of this site across the abutting lot. Direct lot access via Eagle Road is prohibited. ACHD's traffic engineers have reviewed and approved the proposed turn lane configuration. A reciprocal cross access easement for vehicular and pedestrian ingress and egress exists between the lots in the subdivision. A cross access agreement also exists for share parking between businesses and lots in the subdivision. Parking lot landscaping is proposed in accord with UDC standards. Street buffer landscaping was installed with development of the subdivision along North Eagle Road and East Village Drive. Because the drive through lane and back of the building with mechanical equipment will be highly visible from North Eagle Road, staff recommends additional landscaping 
consisting of coniferous uh, trees and bushes is provided within the street buffer along Eagle Road to screen this area and its functions while preserving a clear view of the drive-through window for su surveillance purposes. Conceptual building elevations were submitted as shown that incorporate materials consisting of EFAS in two different colors, tile, metal and concrete trim and accents, and standing C metal roofing. Final design shall be consistent with the design standards listed in the architectural standards manual. Written testimony was received from John Davis, Leighton Davis Architects, the applicant's representative, and they are in agreement with the staff report. Staff is recommending approval with the conditions in the report. Staff will stand for any questions. Any Madam questions? Chair. Yeah, Commissioner Holland. One quick, just one quick question. Sonia, is the drive, um, driveway through the, the north side of the property, is that where the entrance is, or does it come in on the south side? For the drive-through, um, Madam Chair, Commissioner Holland, Commissioners, the the drive-through, um, the site plan is oriented um, to the north. Top is north, so they come in along Village Drive from the north down in here. If you can see my cursor and and up around this way. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Yep. Madam Chair. Oh yeah, Commissioner Castanelli. Commissioner Castanelli. Uh, Sonia, uh, I was curious about the uh, landscape issue brought up. Uh, is is the uh, uh, are there not uh, parapets uh, around the the top there? You mentioned invisibility of of uh, mechanical equipment on the roof. Well, um, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Castanelli, Commissioners, the the code does require uh, mechanical equipment on the roof to be screened, um, but. But this, uh, what I was referring to is mechanical equipment on the rear of the building, visible from Eagle. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Sorry. Either way, we want it to be screened. <laughs> yep. Madam Chair, one more follow-up question. Commissioner Holland. Is that an escape lane in, in, around the drive through um, that I see kind of on that southwest corner? If you, um, Madam Chair, Commissioner Holland, if you look at the hatched area right there, that's the escape lane. And then um, they can drop off here where the arrow is and go out. I've gotten stuck in a long drive through before and you turn the corner and realize there's 20 cars in front of you sometimes and you need to escape. <laughs> right. Our, our city code requires an escape lane if the stacking lane is greater than 100 feet in length. Perfect. Thanks for clarifying. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Uh, do we have the applicant uh, in chambers or, oh, do we have, is that John Fink? Is the applicant? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Fink, if you'd state your name and address for the record and the floor is yours. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Wonderful. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak tonight. And thanks for the presentation, Sonia. Uh, everything's pretty straightforward. We're gonna have another 10,000 square foot building on this property. Right now, there's only gonna be one restaurant in this building. We do not plan to put a restaurant on the north side of this building. Uh, there may be a restaurant in the middle of this building, but they will obviously not be a part of the drive-through. But uh, the staff recommendations from Sonia will add extra landscaping in the back. We'll widen the sidewalks on any pedestrian walkways. And uh, we're in full agreement of that. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Okay. Uh, do we have anybody wishing to testify on this application? We do not in uh, signed up. I did have one person raise their hand, uh, Leighton Davis Architects. I have moved them over and they have the opportunity to speak. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, this Leighton is John Davis. Davis. The floor is yours. We can hear you. Yeah, I, I was just offering. Um, if there was any any questions, that's why I raised my hand. Right. I have nothing right. further to add. Thank you. 
All right, thank you. Um, so if there's no more comments from the applicant, uh, no questions, could any, any other final thoughts from the applicant before we close? Okay, could I get a motion to close the public hearing on H-2020-0116? So move, Madam Chair. Second. Did, right here, Madam Chair in there somewhere. Okay, um, it has been moved and seconded to close the public hearing on H-2020-0116. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, thoughts, comments? Madam Chair. Yeah, Commissioner Fitzgerald. I think the, I mean, the, the Chick-fil-A is pretty significantly uh, distance from this. Uh, and I think the stacking lane they have is pretty significant. It's long and they have an escape lane um, at the end if they needed to get out of there. For, um, so it seems like a reasonable use um, and with guidance from the applicant not having uh, other restaurants using the drive through it and um, in their circumstances, I think it makes sense. I, I don't have any problem. It looks, looks pretty straightforward. And Madam Chair. Yeah, Commissioner Casnelli. Commissioner Casnelli, I'm I'm uh, I would echo echo those uh, comments by Commissioner Fitzgerald. Great, thank you. And I would just remind whoever is making the motion, it's CUP, so it's approval, not a recommendation. Madam Chair, Commissioner Holland. After considering all staff, applicant, and public testimony, I move to approve uh, the drive through for the Village at Meridian Cafe Rio H 2020 0116 um, for their conditional use permit for a drive through establishment uh, with the conditions in the staff report. Second. Okay. It has been moved and seconded to approve H 2020 0116 Meridian Cafe Rio drive through. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fink. Um, next on the agenda is the public hearing for Prescott Ridge, H2020-0047. Uh, we'll begin with the staff report. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Um, this project was previously heard by the commission in September of last year. Uh, the council heard this application and was not in favor of annexing the medical campus portion of the site without inclusion of the 1.27 acre parcel at the northeast corner of the site. So if you'll remember, um, this is the medical campus portion of the site, the commercial area. There's a um, parcel right here, if you can see my pointer, along the northeast corner that was an out parcel previously and was not included in this application. So um, the council remanded the project back to the commission for inclusion of that out parcel in the annexation application. The applicant has submitted updated plans for the overall project that include this parcel and the annex annexation boundary now consists of 128.21 acres of land with 19.85 acres in the commercial portion of the site. An updated um, conceptual development plan was submitted uh, for the medical campus portion of the site, as shown, that depicts the three-story hospital in the same location and the medical office building now shifted to the northeast corner of the site. If you can see my pointer there, it's this area right here. The medical office building changed. Um, it increased in height from three stories to four stories and is proposed to be approximately 80,000 square feet. Um, it now incorporates retail and restaurant uses on the entire first floor, which provides the mix of uses desired in the mixed use regional designated area that was not there previously. Um, staff wasn't planning to go into the whole application again since this was um, heard previously by the commission, but if there's any, um, any questions you have or anything you'd like me to cover, I'm certainly willing to. The rest of the development um, really didn't change. It's it's the same. It was just the commercial portion of the site. Madam Chair. Sonia, did we approve another hospital just down the street from this one too? So we have two medical facilities going in next to each other. 
Uh, the Brighton application Pollard subdivision directly to the north across Chinden did include a hospital in their concept uh, development plans, yes. And I remember- I don't believe there's been any movement on that as far as I know though. Okay, one more follow-up if I may. I, I read that there were some concerns potentially with the emergency vehicle access coming in and out. Um, I think that was my, my only main concern on this project. Do you have any comments related to that? Um, the emergency vehicle should be, um, if, if, well, let me clarify, were you referring to emergency vehicles um, with the emergency department in the hospital? Correct. Yes. Okay. That, so there's yeah. a concern there. They, they will be accessing the site um, from Rust, Rustic Oak Way in Chinden. So they'll, they'll come out here, they'll, there'll be a signal here, traffic signal, and they'll come in here and access and, and the ambulance, ambulance entry is right here, you can see on the site. Madam Chair. Go ahead, Bill, I'll ask mine later. Yeah, go ahead and wrap it, wrap it up. Um, my only other concern was the way that the single family abuts the commercial site. Did staff have any concerns with that? Because it looks like you've got some pretty significant commercial frontage against some of those backyards there. Um, yeah, Madam Chair, um, Commissioner Holland, Commissioners, yeah, that, re that really hasn't changed, but the improvements to the site plan have been the, the shift of that uh, medical office building as far away as they can get it at the northeast corner of the site. Uh, they are providing a 30 foot wide buffer that's um, heavily vegetated, as you can see, along the west and southern boundaries adjacent to existing and future residential uses. Madam Chair. You're on mute, Commissioner. Madam Chair, it's Commissioner Castle. Shall I go ahead? Yes, Commissioner Castanelli. Okay, all right. Uh, Sonia, um, just real quickly, I'm, I'm assuming that I know last time we saw us that, that they were hoping to have that parcel under contract. So I'm assuming that that, that is now the case. But my real question here is, um, how does the layout of the medical campus uh, differ from, because uh, to me, the last time we, I think we've seen a couple versions of it and it it i'm not sure if this goes back to the uh closer to the first time we saw this or the last time we saw it do you have uh do you do you have um a rendering of of what that looked like the layout of the medical campus uh when we approved it when we last saw it um, yes, I can find one, Commissioner Casanelli. Um, it was roughly in this location right here, though. It was um, oriented more north-south and right here where my pointer is. I can find one for you, but give, give me a minute. Okay, because I know I, 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 my, if memory serves me, we also saw a, a, a completely different rendering of it at one point in time but I don't remember if that was the first time out. Yeah, there were several um, iterations of the concept plan that it's been constantly evolving based on staff, um, staff recommendations and the public's uh, requests as well. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Um, is the applicant with us? You could raise your hand. Oh, Pat, okay. Mr. Connor. Yes, hi. Um, my name is Patrick Connor. Um, I'd like to share my screen if I can. Okay, and if you could state your name and address for the record. Yes. Thank you. My name is Patrick Connor. Address is 701 South Allen Street, Meridian, Idaho, 83642. Thank you. Go ahead. Sure. Mr. Connor, you should have the ability to share your screen now. Okay. Thank you.
One moment, please. Hey, Stephanie. Oh, how do I switch that? You can stop sharing and then you can click OK, whichever says you share screen again, and then do your press conference to share. Yeah. OK, thank you. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, as I said before, my name is Patrick Connor. I'm with Providence Properties. Um, this is the third time uh, we are presenting this project to you all uh, at the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, with the exception of uh, Commissioner Holland, um, I don't think you've seen this full presentation. So I'd like to run through it just so you have an understanding of the full project. Um, as I get to different parts of it where things have changed, um, I will stop and spend uh, extra attention so uh, the full commission uh, can see uh, what we have changed and improved. So this is Prescott Ridge. Uh, the location the project location um, is in northwest Meridian, just south of Chindon and east of McDermott Road. Um, everything you see on the screen here is either platted, built, under construction, or approved for construction. Uh, the project does include uh, 28 acres of a site that's owned by uh, West Ada School District. Um, it's part of our project to get them uh, legal, get a legal lot legally annexed and zoned um, as part of our application, but it will develop separately from our project. Uh, here's a future land use map. Uh, majority of the site is medium density residential, uh, with the north portion is mixed use regional. Um, also want to point out that a portion of the Perrican Heights neighborhood is also mixed use uh, regional to our northwest. Uh, the current zoning to our south um, is R4 and R8. To our north is general commercial. The requested zoning boundaries, um, we're requesting about 16 acres of uh, general commercial, 7.92 acres of R15 zone, and about 100 acres of the R8 zone, as shown on the map. Uh, this plenary plat, um, as Sonia alluded to, has not changed um, really at all, with the exception of the addition of the 1.2 acres as requested by uh, City Council. So that is now part of this plenary plat, as shown in the uh, north corner of the property. Uh, 317 single family lots, 38 townhome lots, eight single family attached uh, two unit buildings. We have 14 multifamily lots with um, four plexes on each of those lots, so it totals about 56 units. 42 common lots, um, the one medical campus lot, about 16 acres, and then the uh, Ada County uh, or West Ada School District parcel, which is uh, 28 acres. Our qualified open space is about 15 and a half percent, which is shown on this map. Um, I should know that this excludes the commercial property and the West Ada School District property. Um, it just includes what is included in the residential portion of the project. Um, we do have uh, a main central park with a pool and a clubhouse with large tot lot. Uh, we have pocket parks scattered around, including two tot lots and a dog park um, on the west side of the property. Here's some renderings of that central clubhouse with the pool in the large tot lot. And here's some renderings of the uh, smaller tot lots in the pocket parks around the property. Um, the pedestrian connectivity is always a big um, necessity for a community and it's always a big amenity that people desire. So what I've shown here are the pathways that are through our common lots that kind of break up the, the uh, blocks to allow for connectivity and pedestrian connectivity and also recreation. Um, there's also a 10 foot parks department pathway that runs from the north of the property uh, through the medical campus, through the cul-de-sac, um, through the center of the property, uh, the center park, and to the uh, school district site. Also, the 10 foot uh, pathway continues down Rustic Oak to Rustic Oak or uh, Oaks North south of our property. Uh, here's a shot of the phasing plan. Just want to point out the uh, phase one hasn't changed. Um, 
We are building the full extent of rustic oak in our property from the south portion all the way to the north portion. Um, this was uh, something that the fire department uh, liked and that the city did like because it offered two points of access uh, to our south, uh, to, to uh, Oaks North and also to the north of Chendon. And then it extends all the way farther west to McDermott. So we have those two points of access to ensure that um, the fire emergency response time is um, up to snuff and up to their uh, level of service. With this full build out of Rustic Oak from the very beginning, it will connect to, to the Oaks North Rustic Oak and then down to McMillan. Uh, both the fire department and the police department have said that this would improve uh, the police and fire response times um, for the entire area. Uh, we do have 15 neighbors to our west that are not in the city limits, but they're in the county. Um, but we've um, paid attention to their access point on the south of their cul-de-sac. Uh, we are stepping a road here um, to ensure that they still have emergency access or to give them a secondary emergency access. Um, we've offered to um, install a, op a uh, electronic gate with an Opticom device that would uh, not impede their response time, but also prevent any through traffic or cut through traffic through Serenity Lane uh, from Prescott Ridge. Um, and working with the neighborhood over the past year, uh, we've made a lot of different changes, particularly to the medical campus, but uh, this is one example of um, a gate that they would like to see that we would install um, on the property to ensure they have emergency access, but to restrict the cut through. I'm going to talk a little about the housing types and then um, and they get more in particular about the product. So um, majority of the prop property is the mixed 45, 50, and 60 foot lots that you see in yellow. Um, then you have uh, in blue the uh, cluster 40 foot lots with the option to have attached units in those. Um, in uh, the green are our townhome variety that we'll get into more detail later. And then the red you'll see is the multifamily uh, portion of the site. What you see in purple are large lots, 70 to 100 feet in width. Um, we located these next to our neighbors of, um, of Paragon Heights um, as a buffer and as a transition to their large lots. In working with the neighborhood and the, particularly the HOA and the HOA board, uh, we've committed to limit the height restriction to a uh, single story on these nine lots shown. Um, and particularly, this is to uh, make sure that uh, the two stories wouldn't block any sort of view of the mountains that they had and uh, lower the scale of our homes adjacent to their properties. Uh, here's an example of some of our um, homes for our 40, 50, and 60 foot plans. And these are our larger 50 foot and um, 60, 70 and up houses with a third car garage option. Here's an example of our attached single family. So getting more into the townhouse, and you've seen a couple of iterations of this townhome. This has not changed since the last hearing um, where we um, really uh, improved the layout. Um, just for some background, we now have two points of access of this private drive to uh, Rustic Oak and to Wildfire Drive. We have um, 46 total townhome units, but there's three different um, townhome product types. There's 29 rear low townhomes, which are the ones in the center and on the north part of the site. These all have two car garages, but their front yards uh, are fenced in, but that's what their, um, their private uh, spaces that opens up to a common mew here. And these open up to more of a private mew on the north end. We also have um, uh, front low two car garage uh, units here on the west side. They actually have a backyard that's fenced in uh, for privacy. And on the south side of this uh, townhome complex um, are our two unit duplexes, which uh, are front load onto the onto the public road, but also have private driveways. We do have a common view area here, and we have um, this amenity pocket part over here with a pergola, barbecues, seating, uh, and a fire pit. Here's an example of um, the rear load um, townhomes in the center of the site and the north of the site. Uh, this is an example of the townhomes on the west portion of the site. Uh, these designs are actually, the architecture is getting updated to match the overall architecture for uh, the traditional townhomes and duplex product. And this is the duplex remains. 
Here's an example of some products that we've worked on as a team around the country, uh, different views and how they can uh, live to be uh, communal spaces that open up and are, are used by the community. And here's an example of some amenities that we would have in that townhome gathering park, um, a private space uh, for, uh, located in the townhome area. Um, this is one area that we have improved since the city council um, hearing in December. Um, what, some of the comments we got were having uh, also some private amenity areas for this townhome or for this multifamily. So we included a new tot lot here in the southeast corner, as well as a gathering space here in this um, area of four lots. We've also included the location of our mailbox kiosk and um, a uh, service shed for maintaining the landscape around the units. Here is an example of um, a rendering of the front side and rear of these uh, of these uh, multifamily fourplex units. And we're building these units in uh, two or three other communities around the valley. Um, for all of our homes of all varieties, we are committed to 100% Energy, Energy Star certification. Uh, along with Brighton, uh, we've delivered um, most homes in the Treasure Valley that receive this um, certification of energy efficiency to help decrease energy costs, but also um, help the environment. All homes also, our buyers have the opportunity to come to our design center to customize their home. Um, here's a shot, we're on the cover of the Parade of Homes uh, last fall. And here's a shot of some of our interiors. Uh, lastly, the medical campus, and um, to answer uh, some of your questions from before, and I do have an exhibit in here that shows the other layout, but this medical office building was initially shown to you all uh, in this corner over here and some of the comments that we got from the commission and from our neighbors was it was too close to uh, our neighbors next door. And so we located as far as we could in the northeast corner over here. Uh, also, I don't know if you remember, but um, the southern, the, the bottom portion of the medical office building um, is retail and restaurant. Initially, the retail and the restaurant were a separate building. We went ahead to make it a true mixed use, um, put it on the uh, bottom floor to allow more kind of neighborhood friendly um, uh, services for retail and, and restaurant on the bottom floor and having the top three stories as the medical office. Uh, the hospital building uh, was uh, most recently has always been orientated this way. Initially, probably about six or seven months ago, the building was rotated uh, 90 degrees clockwise. Um, some of the comments we got from our neighbors was they did not want the loading zone uh, next to their homes, and so we rotated this direction. We also moved it um, another 40 feet most recently to the east to alleviate, uh, as, get as far away from the neighbors as we possibly could without um, uh, taking away our ability to park and to loop um, emergency traffic through the site. Um, other than that, uh, nothing really has changed on uh, this layout. Uh, for the medical campus. Uh, what you see shown in circled in red are uh, the outdoor areas and integration uh, into the neighborhood. Uh, and, and just for reference, uh, Commissioner Holland, uh, because this is a commercial site and these are residential, we will have an eight foot high uh, masonry wall in the south and the west portion uh, of this site, as well as a um, 30 foot wide landscape buffer. Um, we think that this will give a pretty uh, sufficient uh, vegetative buffer between the residential and the commercial uses. Uh, there will be two access points of, of pedestrian access into the medical campus, both here through the townhomes and here is a 10 foot wide pathway uh, through the single family that will continue on to Chinden uh, and the, path, the city pathway that's already built. Um, here's some uh, renderings of the large, uh, larger hospital building here. Um, and then this is an example of what the medical office building uh, would look like. The architecture will, will match what the hospital looks like, but this is the medical office campus that um, HCA operates in Caldwell. And this is the same um, sort of use and, and feel that they would have on this campus. Uh, in Meridian. These are just some schematics of some integration into the park system and pathways, outdoor seating, 
uh, walkways through green space and um, areas for people to gather outdoors. So that concludes uh, this presentation. Um, as uh, Sonia said before, um, we were remanded from city council to include that out parcel to answer any questions on that. That out parcel is now acquired by us. So it's part of this application. So it's no longer uh, a what if it becomes part of the project. It is now part of the project. Um, we are very happy to present this to you all again. And hopefully um, uh, I was able to fill in any sort of uh, uh, questions you had on things that we've changed um, and hopefully was able to remind you on some of the good and positive aspects we have in this project. So with that, I stand for any questions. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Connor. I think that, uh, you know, getting that parcel in uh, included in this and being able to see the finished product is very helpful. Um, do we have any questions from the commissioners for the applicant? Madam Chair, I would say thank you for the, the overview because I wasn't here for the first time this came through. I might have been on maternity leave when that one came through. So thanks for the overview. I, I appreciate it. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Do we have uh, anybody uh, signed up to testify on this application? Madam Chair, we do not. Okay. Uh, with nobody being signed up, is there anybody in the audience if you just hit raise your hand or star nine? Madam Chair, I see a couple people raising their hand. Um, Corey Coltrane, one moment, please. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Coltrane. Uh, please give me an address for the record. Matt, fantastic. Madam Chair and Commissioners, this is Corey Coltrane at 6178 North Serenity Lane. I am the third lot from uh, south off of Chinden down Serenity Lane, um, just as a reference there. And um, I would recommend to the Commissioners and to the Chair that you recon, uh, reconsider or uh, turn down actually the rezoning from RUT to uh, CG, that that be denied. Um, we've got a 25 year neighbor. And the reason for that is we've got a 25 year plus neighborhood here. Um, I've been here 22 years now. I've got my, raised my family here. I've got my life invested into this property. Um, we always knew that, you know, at some day there would be some type of growth going on and uh, behind us. And, um, and we, 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 we knew that. But the idea to change this from RUT to CG and put a hospital right in our backyard um, just breaks our heart and it's going to significantly impact us. Um, you know, and I'm also concerned um, with, uh, with the access um, that they are proposing off of our private road. And um, I know we're gonna have some comment on that um, coming in, but I just wanted uh, to voice my opinion that I am totally opposed of this medical campus. Um, yeah, they you know they're going to put an eight foot wall, but how does an eight foot wall, um, you know, block out of a fifty six foot hospital? Um, not to mention the, the it doesn't matter how tall of a wall or how many trees, and the trees just you know inhibit our our beautiful view that we already that we ha we've had. Uh, of the mountains and uh, what you're going to be taken away also from, from the, from the hospital. Um, so I, I appreciate your time and, and you consider uh, uh, denying the rezoning of that, that parcel of property. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colchin. Uh, anybody else, Adrian? Madam Chair, I'm going to allow Mr. Jacobson to talk one moment, please. Yeah, thank you. Madam Chair, could you hear me? Yes, please state your name and address for the record. Very good. My my name is uh, James Jacobson. My address, um, my my residential address is eight three eight six West Sundisk in Boise. 
Um, but my purpose in being here tonight is that I was recently approached by the Peregrine Heights HOA. I'm an attorney um, with the law firm of Sasser and Jacobson. Um, and uh, Mr. Coltrane has already spoken. He's a member of the HOA um, and has been my point of contact. Um, my purpose in providing comment is simply on behalf of the HOA. Um, I think that there are some legitimate concerns that have yet to be addressed. Um, and I, I appreciate that the presentation offered some overview and some additional insight, but I don't think that the, um, the issues uh, regarding the abutment to the residential have been appropriately addressed. I think Mr. Coltrane spoke to some of his concerns with regard to that. Um, the ingress and egress off of this frontage road that's been proposed from Serenity Lane, I don't think he's been appropriately addressed. Um, there was some mention of a gate um, and, and using that to try to address the uh, the volume of traffic um, coming off of Serenity Lane uh, into the proposed medical campus, um, but there was no um, addressing as to how that gate is going to be used or controlled um, and how it's going to then effectively deal with the, the potential increased traffic to the medical campus. Um, also, there was some mention of um, by the chairperson of an additional medical facility located um, at just a short distance from this proposed one. Um, I think that's some concern that we've got two medical facilities that are being proposed within a short distance of each other. Um, and, uh, and so I think that this particular project bears some additional consideration uh, regarding those issues that, that haven't been adequately addressed. Um, I know that this was something that was presented back in September of 2020 and that we're here now with some effort having been made to try to address some issues, but I don't think that they have been. And so it, as Mr. Coltrane indicated, I know that there's a desire for the, the, the project to be rejected, um, but at a minimum, uh, um, there should be some additional addressing of those issues adequately and appropriately before votes taken and approval given. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else, Adrian? Yes, Madam Chair. Next will be Sue Rotsky. Sue, one moment. Okay, Ms. Robsky, uh, if you unmute your mic, you, the floor is yours. Please state your name and address for the record. Madam Chair, thank you. My name is Sue Robsky. I live at 6262 North Serenity Lane, which for a point of reference is um, Corey Coltrane's next door neighbor on the second lot as you come in on the east side. Um, I moved here 21 years ago from Chicago to get away from exactly what I'm going to be sitting in the middle of. I've been a registered nurse for 35 years and I have concerns that we'll have medical campuses across the street from each other. Um, regarding the medical campus in the back of my property, I'm very thankful that you turned the loading dock, but I, I still have concerns um, knowing what goes on at a hospital. I don't see anywhere marked on there now where your medical waste facilities will be. And I um, am concerned with a loading dock still on the side that um, the noise will affect our neighborhood. Um, the height of the medical office buildings has fluctuated between three and four feet. So I, I just want you to imagine sitting in your backyard looking at a tower of a building that, I mean, my, my gardens will be gone. I won't have sun in my yard. I just have concerns that this is gonna dramatically affect not only our quality of life, but whether or not I'm gonna have my basic hobbies that I've been doing from gardening to having a green yard 
Um, so I oppose a four-story structure that is going to block my sun, block my view, and change the quality of life. The access road, I don't believe, has been addressed. And I know that my neighbor, um, Mr. Pittman, who is the first street coming in, is, is very concerned about how that traffic will move um, alongside his house and into the neighborhood. Um, so I, I go along with Corey and I continue to oppose this project. But thank you very much for letting me um, give my opinion. Thank you, Sue. Adrian, who do we have next? Madam Chair, next is Patricia Buckholtz. Patricia, one moment. Okay, Patricia, you've entered. If you can unmute your mic and state your name and address for the record, the floor is yours. Um, I'm actually not a part of this. I just wanted to see if I could get the name of Mr. Jacobson's law firm again. Okay. Um, Madam Chair. It'll be in the minutes. If you, Adrian, do you know it offhand? Madam Chair, um, Patricia, if you want to email cityclerk at meridiancity.org with your request, we'd be happy to help you with that information. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, next we have Carrie Pittman. Carrie, one moment. Okay, Carrie, if you'd like to unmute your mic uh, and state your name and address for the record. Uh, the address is 6203 North Serenity Lane. Okay, go ahead, sir. Yeah, so as uh, was previously stated, I am the first um, property going south off of Chinon on the east side. And uh, there's the pro a proposed frontage road that continues to be an issue on how there's going to be enough space between ITD's um, right away and my property line. And there, there seems to be some issues with, and of course the fire chief and those have not been responsive and or been in these meetings. And there was a point of there was a certain amount of space that needed to be between the property line and the ITD um, right away that was uh, a minimal property or minimal distance. And um, I'm concerned that that's not been addressed in a, a, a uh, manner that someone has never really come out and said, yes, we can and cannot have this much space or can't have, or we need this much space to get a fire truck and or other um, vehicles through this space that is considered to be there uh, an access to this medical campus. Okay. We'll have the applicant address the questions. Did you have any others? Mr. Pittman? Not at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, next is Doug Hanneborg. Doug, one moment. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. State your name and address for the record, please. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair and staff. This is Doug Hanneborg. I'm the HOA president of Peregrine Heights. I live at 6002 North Serenity Lane, Meridian uh, 83646. Um, so I just wanted to start off by saying that we do appreciate Patrick and his team um, trying to meet some of our needs and our concerns of our neighbors. And, um, you know, such as like the single story lots that are abutting our larger lots that he spoke of and uh, the Southern Gate as well. Um, Patrick has accepted and, and made some adjustments for some of our requests, and, and we do appreciate that. 
Um, but however, that being said, there are still ongoing communications with the neighbors of Peregrine Heights um, to check the support levels of this project. And there's still major concerns, um, as you guys have heard previously tonight. Uh, Patrick had asked me if I could maybe write a letter in support of the project. And um, I wanted to run that, you know, by our neighbors and, and get a pulse. And I met a lot of resistance um, in doing that. And I received um, several responses from our neighbors in writing. And I just wanted to share a few snippets of those responses. Um, one neighbor had stated, uh, given that we still don't know what else they can sneak in via amendments between now and the time that this is all built out, we uh, not only don't see how we can rubber stamp the plan, but why we should. We're quite sure that PNZ and the city council don't expect or require us to, especially since they put the whole hospital complex in a separate application in order to move this all through faster. It's certainly not going to be helpful for our neighborhood. In response to Patrick's request, he um, was also wondering what other requests that we had and the neighbors feel like we've already been sharing that with him and have been turned down on some of those. Uh, for example, a buffer space between some of the back fences and our yards, uh, fewer houses abutting the Southeast Peregrine Heights properties and the fact that they're ignoring the major frontage road issue. Another uh, neighbor response was, I'm hesitant to sign off on a letter of support. Each time we meet, more details come to light since the hospital campus is an evolving project. Things can see, continue to seem to change. Another neighbor wrote, <clears throat> we're adamantly opposed to having a hospital next to our subdivision. I've always expected that there would be a nice residential neighborhood behind our property, but would never have imagined someone would try to put a hospital there. Lastly, another neighbor wrote, I'm not a supporter of this project. I have no desire for a large structure behind my house with parking lot lights everywhere, blocking the view that was one of the reasons why I purchased this home. And the road that they want to put 25 feet from our yards is not acceptable. Uh, as previously stated by other people tonight too, there's a consensus that the private road and it being owned by our HOA, uh, legally the development cannot tie into a privately owned road for their access requirements without our consent. And so that seems to be an ongoing uh, discussion and issue. Um, that's all that I have at this time. So thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Commissioner Fitzgerald. Mr. Hanover, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Um, so when the highway district uh, or ITD eventually close your road off, where are you going to get access? Because that's what is eventually going to happen. We've been, we've, in, the, in the earlier conversations about this, that is the access to your neighborhood, whether it be private or not, is likely going away in the next five to 10 years. Is that, can we agree on that? Well, that's what it sounds like. And that's kind of our question too, because if this project requires two access points and that one's being taken away, then it doesn't have two access points. It, it does, so it has one McDermott and it has one on, on Chinden. So I'm, I'm confused. I, I, I think the beforehand we were, we kind of found an even medium by hopefully giving you guys a gated access for the, until your right in, right out comes into play and then the actual eventual termination of your road goes away. So I, th I right. thought we had come so to that. A, so that would be the route. southern the southern access point with the gate, but the frontage road is still an issue because if you're saying their second access point is off of McDermott, then what's, what's the need or requirement now for the access point on our private road? And I think it was for you guys, to be honest. And we'll yeah, no, that's, let, no, this is no. It's been I'll an let issue. Patrick respond to that, but yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, no, I think it's been a consistent issue, and one of the largest concerns is that road tying into our private road. You know, there's what you like. You're saying what the highway is going to do is what the highway is going to do, and so that's why we don't even understand that. If in five years, I agree with you. If they block that, then it's a null and void you know, reason now, because if in five years, what was even the point of that road there tying into ours if it's gonna be blocked off anyways? And that's one of the concerns, because then if for those five years, we just have an excess of traffic that 
you know, isn't necessary or required. And again, there's no other access road anywhere down Shinden. Not even on the busiest intersections or any of the any neighborhood. There's not one I've seen anywhere. Do you guys know of any? So it doesn't make sense to us why this little strip has an access road that will probably be not accessible in five years as you're stating. That's mm -hmm. part of our, our issue too. And then you want to put it 20 five feet from someone's yard, you know? So that's where we're, we're stating that there, it's not clear. It doesn't really make sense. And if you're saying their other access point is McDermott, then that's, that makes sense, right? Cause that's a future. Those are the two. That's what I've been saying too. If it's McDermott and Shendon, then why are we putting in an access road for, you know, a short, short little gap that there's no other access roads anywhere else down Shendon on North or South. And if it's just to fulfill a little requirement or something for the hospital, that's where it doesn't make sense to us. Okay. For sure. Thank you, Mr. Hanberg. Thank you. Do we have anybody else, Adrian? Madam Chair, I don't see any other hands raised. Okay. And Commissioner Seal, do we have anybody in chambers wishing to speak? We do not. Yes. No. No. Okay. Okay. Um, would the applicant like to come back up and address uh, the issues that we've heard? Yes, I would. Um, before I address them, um, Sonia, do you want to talk a little bit about um, the code UDC 113H4B3 that tied us to the frontage road um, with the intent to connect to adjacent properties, uh, particularly the property on the west side of Paragon Heights. Madam Chair, would you like me to address that? Sure. Thank you. Thank Madam you. Chair, members of the commission, um, the city code requires a frontage road adjacent to state highways so it's the the access road is not um, simply serving as an emergency access from chinden i mean it is um, but the the main reason for the access well, let me back up with with the first phase of development um, the applicant is proposing to construct a collector street that's going to extend from chinden boulevard to the property south boundary um, which will eventually connect through to McMillan Road. So that will eliminate the requirement um, for, for an emergency secondary access from the fire department um, when that is uh, constructed. The, um, again, back to the frontage road requirement, that is a, um, the UDC requires frontage roads to restrict accesses to state facilities. Um, for safety reasons. So people aren't constantly, you know, slowing down, um, pulling out into traffic. So that will serve as a um, access road between the um, property to the west of Peregrine Heights subdivision. When that redevelops, um, and that will provide an access road out to the signalized intersection at uh, the Collector Street, Rustic Oak Way and Chinden. So the applicant isn't really, it wasn't their idea to propose this road. It was, it's a city code requirement. Uh, with the State Highway 16 going in um, further to the west there, it, it lack, locks in this property, kind of landlocks it without these access roads. Okay. Hopefully that helps. And um, I guess uh, to, Mr. Connor, then we've had several questions about that access road, if it fits. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and I can actually respond to that too, um, Madam Chair. Um, Joe Bongiorno, um, Deputy Fire Chief, has been out to the site, has inspected the road, as well as reviewed the, the plans. Um, and he has determined that it meets the fire department standards for access, which will also meet the the, the um, city code requirements for um, frontage road as well. Okay. 
And the frontage road is not a public road, but more of a private driveway access, just to clarify. Yeah. Um, and Mr. Connor, I think we had also questions about um, where the medical waste was going um, and the, emer the gate for the emergency access. Yes, um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'll answer uh, all the questions that are brought up. Um, okay, great. So um, just some quick background. I think we've had three, uh, th three or four neighborhood meetings about this project. And um, the comment about the site changing and, and moving around is accurate. Um, I would say it's changed because of comments and us trying to accommodate changes that are asked either by the neighbors, by staff, or by the commission. So we are changing it. I'd argue that we are improving it uh, to be a better product, product project, but also um, a better neighbor for uh, the neighbors. Um, so just briefly, just going through it. Um, yes, by city code, we are required to have the uh, frontage road, the intent of the frontage road is connect to uh, the property on the east side. Uh, I've worked with uh, the, the current planner that's working on that project on the east side of Paragon Heights um, to coordinate a plan as was recommended by staff and by Chief Bongiorno um, to ensure that they have that access road as well, that frontage road as well. Um, we understand that it does kind of create a unique uh, situation with the driveway to Paragon Heights. Um, we have offered to put, it, put signs that say for emergency use only, um, and trying to deter any sort of traffic from using that road, as well as not putting any sort of signage for the hospital uh, to use uh, Cernity Lane, but to drive all the traffic through Rustic Oak. Um, so that's one accommodation that we want to ensure. Um, if and when the access to Cernity Lane does go away, uh, the, the only point of access will be the southern part of Cernity Lane through our project. Um, so we did, do a, a few changes to the building. So we oriented the loading dock and this is also the location of the trash receptacles, which is on the south side of the building. Um, that was a recommendation by, uh, by Ms. Sue Ropsky. And we made that change pretty early on in the revisions of this project and we maintained it. Um, the comments about the height of the building. So the hospital building, the larger building will remain three stories in combining the uh, restaurant and retail into the medical office buildings, it did. Uh, it went, it's at four stories. That's the initial application was a three-story building for the medical office building. Again, moving it all the way to the Northeast corner, we were trying to alleviate the concerns that were brought up uh, at previous uh, public hearings that the building was in the wrong location. Um, the uh, uh, Corey and uh, his attorney, Mr. Jacobson saying that there's still uh, concerns to be addressed. Uh, we've been addressing concerns uh, throughout this project. At the last neighborhood meeting, uh, I had two big takeaways from uh, the HOA pre uh, president, the HOA members and neighbors. Uh, the first concern was, uh, and I believe it came from Mr. Coltrane, was he wanted to see the hospital moved over uh, further east. I moved it, I think, 30 to 40 feet further east um, while maintaining the necessary parking that we had on our east side, but also allowing enough traffic looping to the ambulance entry, as I previously said. Um, this is as far east as we can move the building uh, to make it work and function as a hospital. Um, so that was the first request from the neighborhoods. The second request is that we look at uh, decreasing the height of our uh, residential units adjacent to them. Initially, uh, I was only given the permission to uh, decrease the height of four houses. Um, I had to bend over backwards and ask for permission to move that number to nine. As recently as just a few days ago, uh, the HOA president, uh, Mr. Hanneborg, asked me for an additional lot to be dropped down to one story, and I made that accommodation. So um, that's nine houses that we are uh, taking down to help their view, their view shed. Um, also, this building in the northeast corner, the medical office building, we orientated it east to west. Um, that actually will take away from some of the visibility of the emergency room and the hospital building by moving it that, that direction. The sole reason for this movement was to help 
alleviate some of the questions and the concerns that these neighbors have had about their view. So those are the concerns that have came up in the most recent neighborhood meeting and all the neighborhood meetings. And um, I have asked if there's anything else and that is to be addressed. They have brought up the issue of uh, the frontage road required by code. Um, I believe that those issues are addressed and it, it's necessary for access as well as it's part of code and it's part of uh, um, this project. And so there's really nothing that we can change on that. Um, there's alternative uh, if, if and when um, possibility in the future as this whole area here, pretty much the whole screen that you see is on the future land use map for mixed use regional. If and when these homes redevelop, we could potentially have a stub road. At this point, um, there's, there's options down the road for how this whole area can redevelop um, in the future. Um, as far as the parking lot and the lights and, um, and having that use, uh, we will be using, using parking lot lights that only shine on the pavement and not up in the air. This hospital, just for clarification, is uh, going to cater towards women's services. The typical hours are, um, you know, seven o'clock in the morning till about four o'clock in the afternoon for most of the surgeries and the operations. It's a fairly lightly used hospital use. It's not a trauma hospital. Um, so any sort of big issues or ambulances will go to St. Al's or St. Luke's and not to this hospital. Um, the ambulance entry is really only required because of the level of surgeries that they would do um, for the outpatient surgeries in the hospital. So um, also any sort of, um, they do have regulations for no sirens and no lights uh, adjacent to any sort of neighborhoods. Um, so that's a policy that they have uh, to not disturb any sort of uh, residential areas around the area. Um, So just another clarification, I, we're, we're about, I think it's, and I can do the measurement, but I think we're over 120 feet from the edge of the property line. This buffer zone is uh, 30 feet plus 20 plus probably another, I would say 80 to 100 feet. And so the argument that the building is 25 feet from the property line is, is not an accurate um, representation of this project. Um, I think, um... Yeah, I, I'll um, add something. So this is Stephanie Hopkins of KM Engineering, 9233 West State, Boise 3714. Um, just to kind of touch on a couple of the code-related things and to kind of add to what Patrick has already said. Um, I, I think Doug and maybe another uh, neighbor had mentioned that they think that um, we're kind of sneaking things through. I think Patrick did a good job of, uh, you know, explaining how many times we've met with neighbors and um, all the conversations we've had with them and staff and and other stakeholders in the area. Um, additionally, any application that we're, that the hospital will have to go through a conditional use permit, which will include um, more detailed plans, more requirements such as a photometric test and, um, and other things that will require that we make sure we're not disturbing them with light um, and that any noise is mitigated and that we comply with design standards. Um, in that application and through the next uh, an administrative application after that, we would have to comply with all the code requirements and, and the uh, neighbors would have another opportunity to talk to us about their concerns and, and thoughts too. Um, I think Doug had also mentioned that um, he was hoping to see residential in this area. And as Patrick had said, um, this area on the future land use map is designated as the mixed use regional zone, which um, for the future land use and that, that area really does um, guide development towards higher developments or higher density developments for residential properties. So really the only residential designation we'd be able to request here is the R15 or the R40 zone. Um, and then in fact, they actually hope that you're going to have more of a commercial and regional draw to the area. So that's kind of where we landed with this project through several discussions with the city and um, you know just looking to see what makes sense in the area. So I think that's all I had to add on that. I just want to add just one more thing. Um, there's been some mention of there's already an approved medical campus across the street. Um, we are fully aware of that. In fact, um, HCA, who is attached to this project, 
was initially attached to that project until um, they decided that their relationship would be better used um, with us on this side of the street. And so from, from a resident and a user standpoint, having uh, multiple medical op options nearby is actually beneficial as a consumer. Um, you potentially have more access to uh, a variety of, of doctors and options, potentially uh, lower cost of, of uh, you know, surgeries and operations, um, as well as there is some um, efficiency and it's smart to have an adjacency of uses of, of similar uh, medical professions across the street from each other. Um, so it can be almost like a medical hub. Um, obviously the market will dictate what services that each of the hospitals provide. Um, but in many cities all across our region and around the country, there are many different uh, medical operators who operate adjacent to each other. And this is not uh, to be, uh, uh, you know, to be in competition at all times, but also there's some real efficiencies and this can be a real uh, win for the city and for the consumers um, from a medical standpoint. So I think that we covered most of the questions that were, uh, that were brought up. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do we have uh, any questions for the applicant? The Madam Chair. Commissioner Yearsley. So I may have missed it. I apologize. The hospital, is it, was it five stories? Is that what I heard? Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Yearsley, it's, it's a three-story hospital. Okay. Four-story medical office building with the retail and restaurant on the bottom floor. Okay, so for along the uh, residence to the west, I know we got a 30 foot wide buffer with trees. Are you planning a fence or a, a structure of any kind to block the noise? Commissioner Yearsley, uh, by code, we are required to do an eight foot tall masonry wall. Okay. So that, um, and, and actually in talking with the neighbors over this time, uh, they, they I, I believe, were, were happy with the 30-foot buffer, um, and but they also were saying, you know, we don't want too many trees because we don't want them to grow too high because that would disrupt the view even more. So we want to make sure that we work with the neighbors, ensuring that we put an appropriate uh, species of trees there that we don't completely block out uh, their view. Um, so that's something that we want to make sure that we work with the neighbors as we pick the right species of trees to offer the visual and sound barrier, but, but not too much. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay, seeing none, um, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing on H2020-0047. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Chair. Uh, uh, Commissioner Seal. <laughs> um, let me start out by saying I sympathize with the folks that share this the, uh, the border there to the west. So um, I've had a place with a view twice in my uh, existence here in Idaho and I've moved out of both of them because houses or something else were built behind me. So um, I, I very much sympathize with that, but I mean, how do we protect a view? It's not in our purview. It's nothing that anybody owns. We've, we've been through this before with other applications and although I sympathize with them, there's also an understanding when you move in that there is going to be building around here. There's, there's no stopping it at this point in time. Um, Hopefully we've done a good job in mitigating, you know, the growth that comes here and making sure that we're responsible about it. Um, I mean, I know that so far, I mean, I'm, I've just been jotting down, I mean, the hospital was turned and lowered. Um, the, the, um, the fencing was revised. They put in a 30 foot pathway. They've um, put in electric gate, um, ACHD is approved. I mean, the city was the one that asked them to put in the access point um, the commercial building has been moved. Um, they lowered the houses to one story around. Um, they're working with West Ada 
um, school district to bring in a school. I mean, I can't think of, and, and through the entire process, I think they've tried to be very transparent. Um, I mean, we've worked with a lot of developers and builders that I feel are not transparent. They're trying to get away with an absolute minimum to bring things in. I think these guys are being very creative and I think they're trying to add something to the community that I think is sorely needed, um, not only in services, but in jobs as well. So uh, having all that done, <laughs> and again, there, are, there has been a lot of changes. I mean, we've seen this thing three times now and uh, all the changes that I, uh, have noted here and everything that I see coming through are all because of recommendations that have been made. I don't see anything that's coming in here as, you know, they're trying to sneak in or put it in sideways or whatever the verbiage is around that. So, um, I mean, at some point in time, you have to accept that you're going to have neighbors. <laughs> that's, I mean, it's an unfortunate thing. And again, I sympathize with that, but I mean, at least it's not a big box store or, you know, um, you know, an R40 or something like that coming in. Um, I mean, a, a quiet little hospital that's sitting there, I would almost welcome it in. Madam Chair. Great. Commissioner Grove. Uh, I'd like to echo a lot of what Commissioner Steele just said. One of the things that, you know, we have seen this, like you said, three times, and I, I feel for the the residents that are next um, to this project. Um, one of the things that kind of keeps coming back is this, and I know this is not their intent, but the compromises that have been made are not. It's not a con, It's not a capitulation to do everything that is asked of the developer, there's a compromise that has to come from both sides. Um, and I feel like throughout this process that that has been the goal of, of the project um, is to, to meet in the middle on a lot of these things. Um, and so I, I applaud, um, you know, the changes that have been made and uh, some of the things that they've changed even since we saw it last time in the residential piece. Um, I, I like, you know, what they've done with the that um, fourplex area and making that more of a, a livable space. Um, and the, um, I, I continue to like what they did with the, I think it was the second time we saw it when they changed the townhome section to have the muse um, and, and creating that sense of space within that area. Uh, the whole project has done um, something that I appreciate, which is creating um, a sense of space, a sense of community within a project. Um, and I think tying that into the medical campus um, is great with what they've done. And I, I'm in favor of where they moved the um, medical office and the consolidation of it into one building. I know that added a story, um, but it did improve uh, the, the traffic flow in that area. Um, and it, it provided a provides a, a different um, aspect that seemed um, kind of cramped um, before, but feels like it, it will really do what they had, had intended to do from the get-go. Um, I think that, you know, where this is next to the state highway is a great location for a hospital facility. Um, and especially where, you know, it's going to have the two highways crisscrossing not far from this. Um, and it's also going to improve um, what else is going on in this general area with, um, you know, bringing jobs uh, out to uh, Northwest Meridian where, you know, we need to continue to have places for people to work near where they're living potentially. Um, and so we don't want to have so, just solid, you know, residential use throughout an area. Um, it, it, it doesn't hold up well, in my opinion, over time, so. Thank you. Madam Chair. Commissioner Casanelli. So here's my, um, you know, one, one thing I'll, I'll note, there seems to be far more um, comments by the residents of 
uh, the of Serenity Lane there this time than than last time, which which is interesting. And I thought we hit a lot of the concerns last time. But here's what really here's what's kind of uh, getting getting to me and bothering me. When we first saw it back in September, it was a uh, it was uh, one of the buildings was four story and one was three. And then when we saw it in October, um, and I think we went past midnight that night, and I hope we don't do it tonight. But when we when we saw it, then we went over it. They had reduced the height of uh, of, of both buildings and taken them to three stories. And that was, I, I think that was a, a big part of. Um, and we liked everything else they did on the residential side, but I but I think that that was a big thing with um with all the commissioners uh that they that they really looked at that and they 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 did what they could to work with the with the neighbors there to to um to reduce the the height to try and keep a a, a view to a degree they moved uh you know and, and we had asked them um and i could you know i'm looking at the motion that we passed last time. Um, and it was, it was a three story medical office building, um, be moved to the East. And now that they got that lot, they were able to do that, but now they bumped it up to four. So we approved it unanimously as, as a commission at a three story hospital and a three story office building. And now they come back today. Um, and one of those buildings is now, a four story. I don't know how much the hospital has changed. Um, uh, it, it doesn't look like much. It's, it has been ori- reoriented a whole lot f- from the, the very first time it, it, it was, but it looks like it's pretty similar to when we approved it. But the big one is that um, we what we approved was a three story. We're now, they've, they've come back, kind of feel like a little bait and switch. They've come back now since going to council with a four story. And um, that's not that's not what I wanted last time. I don't know if, you know, I can't speak for all my uh, fellow commissioners here, but I do know I'm looking at the motion and, and what was made there. And it was an approval based on both buildings being three stories. So where, where I sit, um, I'm, I'm, that's what I wanted. That's what I said uh, yay to on the approval. And that's what I'm sticking with is if they came back, at four store, or if they came back with a three story on the office building, and I realize they're trying to put the, they want to put a uh, retail and restaurant on the bottom floor. I, I get what they're doing, but that's with all the work that we did and the hours we spent on it, that's what we approved. And now we're, 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 we're looking at something different now to approve it. And really all this council wanted to do was kick it back to us until, until we had that uh, parcel uh, as part of it. Well, now it's ch- the design has changed since what we approved. That's what I'm trying to say. So, um, I Madam personally Sir, I, ask I can't Kassel get Lake behind Kassel. it. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, Commissioner Fitzgerald. Um, so, I, I get what you're saying. I think the, if I recall correctly, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, if you're looking at the notes, but there was a request to not only bring that that parcel in and try to incorporate it, move the medical building over, but also include retail that was the direction they gave we gave them so i think they're going after the direction they gave them or at least that was my understanding of the direction we gave them, is we would like to see some type of retail restaurant pad something there that incorporated that into just not just an office building um so i mean moving it you know 50 to 80 feet or more i'm not sure exactly what it's a significant amount is much more than the angle you're looking at if you if you had it in the middle of that uh, parking lot. Um, and so we approved it not knowing exactly if that thing was going to be, it was going to be approved with that uh, new lot or not. And it was in the middle of that thing. So we've moved it over 80 to a hundred feet. Um, and it's added a story that we asked for. I mean, we didn't ask for that specifically, but we asked for retail and restaurants uh, to be on that pad somewhere. So I, I, I don't think they're bait and switching. At least I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I don't think there's a bait and switch going on. I think there's, uh, they're listening to us and trying to incorporate what we asked them to do. So that, at least that's the money I took away from it. Madam okay. Chair. Commissioner Holland. 
Can I just ask a clarification question to staff? Do we have anything planned to the east of this development on Chinden right now? Or what the future use map is there? Is that still continued mixed use possible commercial zoning there? Um, Madam Chair, uh, commissioners, we do not have anything directly to the east yet. Um, that area is also designated mixed use regional. I, I believe there's a landscape company there now. So it's likely that at some point that would continue with more commercial. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair, I don't know if you want me to make my comments now. <laughs> Go right ahead. Um, I, this is the first time really looking at this application because I was out the last couple times you guys heard this. I think, again, I was maybe on maternity leave or um, elsewhere, but I apologize for not being involved in that before. Uh, I love, I, I really like commercial developments. Obviously that's my background is economic development. Um, hospitals bring great jobs. They bring great wages. They, they bring great amenities that are needed for communities so that people don't have to drive as far for medical services. If I could have picked where to put one, I wouldn't have chosen to put it necessarily next to an R2 subdivision. Um, so that's, that's my challenge to looking at it. And I know it sounds like you guys have gone significant rounds of conversations on how to be as amenable to that neighbor as possible. Um, it, it's tough. I, I would, I, I think it looks like they've made some good concessions to try and fit in there. The residential component, I think it's, it's a well-balanced project. The only heartburn I'm having is still with that Serenity Lane and how that ties in. I wish that there could be another row of homes to transition it, but I know that that would probably still cause some heartburn for those folks as well. So I, I commend you all for making the recommendations you did. It looks like they've integrated a lot of those components. I would also agree with Commissioner Fitzgerald's thoughts on the uh, moving the building to the east. If it's going to integrate with future commercial, you're likely going to have other structures that will come in at, at a height um, and you're kind of transitioning it over to the east side. I think it might be far enough away that the difference between a three story and a four story is not gonna make a huge difference um, where it's located. So I'm okay with the four story building there for the office because it adds the, the potential to have more restaurants live workspaces available to the public there. Um, but I, I certainly commiserate with the Serenity Lane folks and I'm, I'm struggling on how to help them, but it's, it's tough that that neighborhood is located next to this project or that this project's located next to that neighborhood, whichever way you put it. That's my only heartburn. Mr. Yearsley? Yes, Commissioner, uh, Chairman, or Chairwoman. Uh, you know, it's, I, I guess for the me is, um, the homeowners, you know, has uh, to, the, to the west, has had a great opportunity for 20 years to live out in peace with, with nobody around them. And unfortunately, growth has finally caught up to them. Um, as I've been listening tonight, I've, I've, I've tried to determine is the use appropriate for the area. Um, initially, I thought that the, the, the hospital was five stories, but three stories. I don't see as a, a big an issue, especially as far as way as, as it is. Um, my one concession is is the, they're going to do an eight foot wall, masonry wall. Um, I would consider making a motion go ten feet tall if, if you know as an option just to give a little bit more screening for the homeowners if they prefer. Um, I, I've watched and seen other areas have the same issue with remote residents out in the out out in the, in the fringes getting caught up and it is tough I, I feel for them but uh, at the end of the day you know development has come close up to them it may not be the development that they want um, but I think it is an appropriate use given the location to the highway and the future state highway 16 um, and so I think with that, and then also I echo um, Commissioner Fitzgerald, um, we asked them for some rev commercial and uh, I, I like where they put that and added the story there just to give, um, and it's far enough away that I don't think it'll be as big of an impact as uh, more commercial use on closer to them. So um, 
with that, I would be in favor of the project. Yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and throw in my two cents. Um, I, I think with the highways where they are, I mean, they just, we need to have, it, it, it begs for a regional use. Um, and it's, I feel bad that they've, you know, that their houses were once upon a time next to a much slower moving uh, highway uh, or way less traffic, um, but the growth has come and I think it's an appropriate use. Uh, and I, yeah, personally, I think I would rather have this than a big R40 development right behind me. And that's, you know, a 15 or a 40 is what could potentially be there. Um, I think this is probably a better transition and saves the view and probably less noise um, for more of the homes there. Um, Cause you've got, you know, parking lot for the most part, uh, not obstructing several of the homes views. Um, so, and I, I think the applicant as well has done a lot, I mean, a lot of what we've asked and working with the neighbors, um, you know, like I said, it doesn't, sometimes it's just not everything you want. Um, but I think they've done a good job and providing better access in the future for what's coming. Anybody else? Comments, motion? Madam Chair, I'll make a motion. Commissioner Yearsley. After considering all staff, applicant, and public testimony, I move to recommend approval to, to City Council of file number H2020 0047 as presented in the staff report for the hearing date of January 21st, 2021, with the following modifications that the block wall to the east be raised to 10 foot. Uh, upon approval of the, uh, the homeowners association um, of that, that increase at city council. Commissioner, Madam Yersley, Chair. Did you, mean, did you mean West? Yes, Sonia. Um, clarification, yes. Um, I, I believe he meant West, um, but yes. city code restricts um, the maximum height of fences in the commercial districts to eight feet in height. Okay. Um, However, you could you could require a two foot berm with an eight foot tall fence on top. I like that, Sonia. For you the same awesome. result. <laughs> um, Madam Chair. They could also apply for um, alternative compliance to that section of code that re restricts height to eight feet as well. So either one of those um, options and you could you could allow for either of those options if you'd like. Alternative compliance has to be approved by the director, so there's no guarantee in this forum that it would be approved. I, I like the I would like to amend my motion to add a two foot berm with an eight foot block wall to the west. Madam Chair, quick. Oh, could we? If, if I can make a point, we, we, I mean, the whole argument started out, we were trying to protect a view. If we put a 10 foot fence in, they're going to have a view of concrete. Well, and I, you know, for me, it was, <laughs> is based on, you know, if the homeowners association doesn't want that, that they can say, no, that was my, my motion is based on approval of the homeowners association. Okay. My only concern was the noise from the hospital, uh, trying to help block the noise. Understood. Okay. Is there a second? Motion. I'm sure you see. We have a motion for approval of H-2020-0047 and a second uh, with uh, modifications. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Um, thank you. Uh, 
Mr. Connor and Stephanie. Um, next on the agenda is, um, I think I'll stop real quick. Does anybody, do we want a five minute break or do you want to plow through? Okay. Um, it's 8.32, so let's do five minutes. Thanks, Madam Chair. <laughs> Thank you, see you in five.
Madam Chair, can everybody hear me okay? Okay. Yes, I just, I'm looking, do we have Commissioner Seelbeck? I thought I saw Commissioner Holland. I just wanted to make sure you guys could hear me. Yeah, we're good. Um, Thank you. Two, three, four, and Commissioner Casanelli. I don't see a green circle on Commissioner Casanelli anymore. Oh, there we go. Okay. And are I think we all I back? Him. Yep, we are here. Okay, so we will reconvene uh, and start. Uh, Next item on the agenda is the public hearing continued from January 7th for Vicenza North subdivision H-2020-0108. And we'll begin with the staff report. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is Joe Dodson, Associate Planner. Um, bear with me through this one, this is a complicated project and um, I'll probably explain a lot. Um, I am going to do my best not to get too far into the weeds and rather let you guys ask those questions if you want them. I hope that you all reviewed my staff report as that has a lot more of the detail. Um, secondly, I do. I have heard that the applicant is in attendance and I will be running their presentation from home for Madam Clerk. So now we can get going. As you can see on the images in front of you, this is a project located generally in the northwest corner of McMillan and 10 Mile, uh, but behind, it's all the undeveloped land behind the existing Walmart. The property consists of two elements. Um, the MDA, the Development Agreement Modification, consists of approximately 76 acres, while the plat and rezone request consists of 63 and a half acres of land. The rezone request, or currently it is zoned CC, CG and LO as and R15 for the remaining piece along the south. North is R8 in residential zoning. To the west is R4 in residential zoning. To the south is R8 in residential zoning is, or R8 in residential uses. We'll tear south. And then also to the south is CG with the noted Walmart and some other uh, smaller commercial uses. East. Across 10 mile is more R8 zoning and residential uses, some LO, and then on the northeast corner of McMillan and 10 mile is more CG, um, but it should be noted that the largest lot in that area was approved for a large 55 and older multifamily community. This application is located in the mixed use community future land use designation and has a very small area of medium density residential along its western boundary that is kind of basically part of the existing bridge tower subdivision. As noted, the applicant is requesting a rezone and it totals 63.56 acres of land for the purpose of rezoning 41.58 acres to the R8 zoning district and subsequently reducing the CC zone from 37 acres to approximately three and a half reducing the LO zone from approximately 10 acres to one and a half and increasing the CG zone from approximately 13 acres to 16.7 acres. It includes a preliminary plat request that consists of 169 single family residential building lots, detached residential, six commercial building lots and eight common lots on 56.9 or 57 acres of land. And the development agreement modification as noted is part of the request as well. They want to amend the existing development agreement for the purpose of developing the site with detached single family and general commercial consistent with their new development plan as seen here with the new zoning exhibit. Excuse me, I had to cough that for a second. Um, one correction, the this portion here, if you guys can see my corner, the small, it's about three and a half acres is actually supposed to be CC and not CG. Uh, the rezone exhibits submitted by the applicant are wrong. And I, one of my conditions of approval is to correct that to include this area as CC. They would have to revise their other rezone exhibits as well. 
and then north would be to the right on this image for reference. Moving along, the applicant is proposing to construct a project with six acres of qualified open space, which amounts to the minimum 10%. The qualified open space consists of the 10 mile buffer, the collector street buffers, the pathways, uh, multi-use and micro, and other smaller landscape in lots, in caps. The applicant is not including any of the open space from the existing development, but is removing some of the existing park area for some lots within this plot. As you can see, there's a dotted line on this. That is the boundary of the existing park right now where the fence line is. So they're taking just these, this little area here. Um, the applicant has submitted a master open space plan for both, which I should say it shows compliance with the overall required minimums and approved amounts for Volterra North and South, which were previous approvals. Specifically, as noted, the existing park is over 13 acres in size and that was constructed and improved in 2017. It was approved to be a minimum of 10.2. So it is currently larger than what it is intended to be. With this plat, the applicant is leaving 11.4 acres of the park untouched and therefore exceeding the approved park size. One qualified site amenity is proposed in this development consisting of a segment of multi-use pathway as required by the master pathways plan. It is gonna be on the north side of this collector street. Connect all the way to 10 mile, run along it, cross the local streets and connect back into the multi-use pathway existing in Bridge Tower. The proposed plat, as noted, is over 40 acres in size, so that requires at least two amenities. I have recommended a condition of approval that the uh, applicant add an additional amenity within this proposed subdivision or within the shared park. I would like to note that um, there have been some discussions of potentially adding one in the park in Volterra South. Um, in order to make that work, staff needs to see an overall amenity list as well, um, ensure that there's enough amenities nearby this subdivision for that to work. Otherwise, the amenity will have to be on this side of McMillan and within the subdivision. Access is proposed via new local street connections to an existing to an extension of the collector street as noted that goes through the site from about the southwest all the way to the northeast and is shown as west gondola street the commercial portion of the site has driveway accesses to this collector street as well but only on the east side of the street west gondola will be extended from the center of the development where existing north san vito way and north vicenza way intersect or san vito way is this western one and vicenza way is this eastern one both are shown as collector streets and end right in these points. Gondola will continue east and north and connect to 10 mile road. The applicant is proposing to construct all internal local streets of the subdivision as brick pavers, as he did in Bridge Tower, and extend the two local street um, stubs from the Bainbridge subdivision to the north. Through the traffic impact study, the applicant is required to construct dedicated westbound right turn lanes on McMillan Road at both existing collector streets, San Vito Way and Vicenza Way. So again, those are westbound turn lanes on both of those. The TIS provided by the applicant did not incorporate any of the future commercial, <clears throat> any of the future commercial traffic because no end users are currently known and the applicant does not intend on constructing the commercial until at least phase five of the development. Because of this exclusion, ACHD is requiring that an updated TIS be submitted prior to the first application for any use within the commercial portion of the development. Staff fully supports this condition by ACHD. The applicant is requesting preliminary plot approval of 169 detached single family lots, eight common lots on 41 acres of the 63 acre rezone request. And with, as I noted with six commercial lots. According to the phasing plan, the residential and commercial is constructed over seven phases with the residential being in the first four. The applicant is also proposing to fully construct the collector street extension in phase five, which staff does not support <clears throat> and has recommended it is constructed fully with phase one for added connectivity and overall circulation. 
the applicant is requesting to modify the existing DA, which is the existing concept plan is in front of you now, which is again, as I noted, approximately 76 acres because it includes the existing R15 piece, which is right about here. It should, it is now being proposed to include detached single family dwellings as discussed, general commercial, a small area of office and conceptually multifamily along McMillan. The existing DA includes a concept plan for this mixed use area from 2008. There was a modification to the DA in last year, or sorry, we're in 2021 now, in 2019. And it continued, I should say, brought forth this concept plan with it and the majority of the existing DA provisions. This existing concept plan received a, in two, again, it's from 2008 when the property received a comp plan map amendment to change the property from medium density residential to mixed use community. The current concept plan depicts a large scale business park consisting of a private hospital or other large employer, large and small scale commercial and a large area of assisted living facilities with supportive medical offices in the area that is zoned R15. Um, in, to put it more bluntly, this was intended to be another Silverstone or El Dorado type of business park. That was the initial intent when this came forth in 2008. <clears throat> it was intended to be a, an employment center here in Northwest Meridian. The applicant believes the existing concept plan depicting this business park and medical campus is no longer attainable on this site because of various market factors and the fact that no hospital or large employer has requested approval. Therefore, the applicant is proposing the new concept plan and plat with a significant reduction in the existing commercial in order for the single family residential to be developed. <clears throat> As part of the rezone request, the applicant is requesting the overall commercial zoning from approximately, sorry, is reducing the overall commercial zoning from approximately 63 acres down to approximately 22. This loss of 41 acres equates to approximately 65% of the existing commercial zoning out here. The percentage itself is large, <clears throat> I apologize. But just as important is the loss of potential employment. The remaining smaller areas of commercial proposed will likely be you know, strip commercial with a majority of minimum wage service jobs instead of the higher wage jobs seen in larger commercial buildings or those with complex uses that require more expertise. Staff does not believe the remaining 22 acres is enough. Hold on one second. Clearly I'm talking too much because my throat's telling me to stop. I apologize. Staff is amenable to additional residential on this site as noted in my staff report and as discussed with the applicant but there is significant loss of commercial and potential employment with the applicant's request. Because of this, staff recommended specific revisions to the development plan to retain more commercial zoning and include more integration within the development to be more compliant with the comprehensive plan and the mixed use community designation. The main recommended revisions are as follows. Uh, to construct a gondola street further west and deeper into the site, generally located where the existing North Calcutta Street is. Connect the Eastern Mound Stub Street along the property's north boundary from Bainbridge directly to Gondola Street and still meet the ACHD offset requirements. With the movement of Gondola Street further west, you'd then be able to expand the commercial east of Gondola Street. I recommend that that new area commercial as noted on the right hand side would be CC or LO, preferably CC, and that is what the applicant did show on the left there. And in addition, I recommended depicting the existing R15 piece, um, maintain the existing concept plan of assisted living and other specialized nursing uh, medical uses as discussed in the 2008 application and then shown on the subsequent existing concept plan. Um, to go a little bit more into detail here. The applicant did, well, before, before I do that, I'll finish the other part. This new area of commercial that I noted would allow buildings to front on Gondola Street and have shared plazas along that street within walking distance of the residential. 
and place the parking area between the sets of buildings rather than parking and then gondola street and then homes. It would offer a better buffer and more integration of the uses and a better transition from the residential to the commercial and then subsequently the residential to 10 mile road. The main reason for this rezone request is, for, is to reduce the amount of commercial area due to market factors as stated by the applicant. In line with this, if the applicant chooses to zone this area CC, there is potential that the multifamily residential could be approved later on with a conditional use permit, it, which gives the applicant an opportunity to turn some of this commercial area into residential in the future while also allowing the city to keep more commercial zoning in the area. Another option in the commercial CC zone could be vertically integrated as well, which includes residential and commercial in the same structure. Staff recommends, well, as I noted, the applicant did submit a revised plan prior to the commission meeting in response to my recommendations. That is shown on the left-hand side. It is not what I envisioned. Um, it's a, more changed in that than I anticipated. Um, there might be some just miscommunication between what I wrote and what the applicant saw. With that being said, what I tried to draw up on the right, so I apologize for my second grade art skills with computers, was just generally showing how this how this could work. What I what I as simple as it can be is just shift Gondola Street and the residential west and remove some of those lots, but still maintain the same format and the same design, but just shift everything west. And then that new space to the east of Gondola Street is now an area for more commercial. I don't find it necessary to shift the road north as shown in the new concept plan by the on the left, or to change the internal circulation of the other side. Um, I, I do appreciate that they showed the connection from the easternmost Stub Street for um, Bainbridge as well to help minimize any cut through traffic. But again, I think that some of the revisions were just overly complicated and maybe not necessary. Uh, obviously, the applicant will have their time to speak as well and maybe give some more insight into why that was changed the way it is. Um, in addition, Commission has the opportunity to recommend that we continue the project to work together and kind of get our concept plans more aligned or recommend denial of the project, stating any number of reasons as known, or recommend approval of the existing plan as proposed. There were 15 pieces of testimony submitted as of about 5.30 this afternoon or this evening. Some are in favor and some are against the project. Um, the main issues presented by the neighbors were as follows. Um, first of all, how the first neighborhood meeting occurred and its validity. Validity. This was the reason for the original continuance in December. Um, um, we recommended highly and the applicant listened to us to hold another neighborhood meeting in November or in December in order to make sure that everybody had the opportunity to participate and, and it met code. In addition, there were concerns about the loss of acreage in the park. As noted, they are still leaving more than what the required amount is for the park, so there should be no issue there. Um, concern with the addition of more homes and the increase in traffic, um, the utilization of the existing amenities and park space with, with more homes, and then the lack of supportive commercial. Um, on the second hand, I did have other, other pieces of testimony thought that there wasn't enough residential and a preference for less commercial. Um, the applicant did receive letters of support noting the overall quality of the existing community and its general upkeep. Those are generally the main comments from the testimony. Overall, with my recommended revisions and conditions of approval outlined in my staff report, I do recommend approval of the subsequent applications. And after that, I will stand for questions. You're muted, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, any questions for staff? Let's say hearing none, uh, do we have the applicant? Should be in person. Um, I will run their presentation. Okay. Do we have the applicant there, Commissioner Steele? Okay. Yes, he's preparing right now.
Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay. And so would the applicant state name and record for the name and address for the record and the floor is yours. All right, can you hear me? Uh, there we can, yes. Thank you, Madam uh, Chairwoman and members of the commission. I'm Bonnie Layton with NV5 at 690 South Industry Way, Meridian, um, Idaho, Suite 10, 83642. And I'm here tonight on behalf of our client to represent this project um, that Joseph um, has laid out for you. So um, just to touch base um, quickly on the project, it has quite, uh, quite a history with it. And um, we appreciate the work that we've um, been able to do with staff and the feedback that we've had from them. We've been working with staff um, since July on this, we've had two formal pre-application meetings, several um, conversations in between them and some other meetings to really look at um, how we can revise the site. And okay, thank you. Um, so what I did just for your reference um, was put together a, a bit of um, history of the site. And um, so what you should see on the screen is this project was originally annexed in 2005. And at that time, the project included 312, almost 313 acres, and 44.23 acres of that was non-residential. So as you can see on the slide, the prop, prop, property boundary was, is in yellow, and then um, the non-residential zoning um, is in blue. So if you, can, if you can switch to the next slide, thank you. Um, and then in 2008, um, the previous owner applied for a rezone and a DA modification. And so what I've done is um, tried to illustrate what that request actually was. So it converted 93 acres of, of residential from the original application into an additional 73.64 acres of non-residential and 20 acres into the R15. Um, that was further broken down into, uh, and I have it on the slide here, 37.84 acres of uh, CC zone, um, 25.10 acres of CG zone, 10.7 acres of the LO zone, and 20 acres of the R15, as I mentioned before. If you go to the next slide, Joseph, please. So effectively what that did is um, the owner was specifically rezoning this property from primarily residential um, for the purpose of a hospital and surrounding facilities similar to a hospital facility um, located at Eagle Road and I-84. So this was something that was envisioned at the time and that was why this request was brought uh, forward. A revised concept plan was created with that to accommodate a main hospital building and ancillary support buildings. Various zoning designations were requested um, as well to support those ancillary uses. And so, oh. Okay, so, um, as this next slide identifies, the reason um, I've uh, referenced in that site plan revision and how these zoning designations came about, it was very specific to this site plan. Um, again, that, in, that contemplated a hospital site and ancillary uses that would um, support and be complemented by each other. Um, let's see. In the CC zoning, um, there were some specific. There was some specific language uh, um, in the intent of the application, as well as in the LO zoning and the R15 zoning. And while this plan contemplated um, the the complementary uses to the main building, which would be the hospital, which is it's hard to see, but um, under the CC designation, kind of in the middle of the site. Um, 
even though those uses were contemplated, the development agreement and the application at the time did leave room for um, any of the uses proposed would be part of um, the underlining zone. So in the R15 zone, for example, the resident um, down at the bottom that I've underlined, the proposed R15 residential area will help meet the city's objectives. The area also acts as a transition use for the proposed residential areas to the west and will be de developed with uses listed in the city's uniform development code. So um, with that effort, uh, the plan was changed in 2008. Unfortunately, um, that deal did not happen and the hospital did not locate in, in this location. So the plan that was envisioned, although it was um, a great idea at the time, did not come to fruition. Joseph, if you could switch to the next slide. Thank you. So then in 2010, um, with the hospital concept gone away, uh, the user look, finding a, another site, um, a portion of the project was sold, or the property was sold to Walmart. Um, there was 21.52 acres in the northwest corner of 10 Mile and McMillan. Um, the remainder of the project at the time stayed the same. So, um, and I've identified that in, in the red box there. That was the remaining non-residential from uh, 2008. And then the zone change, the R15 in 2008, that also stayed the same. Um, the property was then purchased by the, the current owner, our client, uh, Bridgetower Investments in 2011. And uh, the owner, our owners kept that land as commercial because they build for, uh, commercial space. They prefer commercial space. Um, from 2008 though, um, until now, it has been essentially no demand for commercial users. Um, there's been absolutely no demand for um, well-paying employment jobs. Um, there has been some interest in the R15 zone. Um, however, no senior housing or assisted living developers have expressed any interest in, in that site. Then in 2019, I think it should be noted that there was another DA modification um, that supersedes all the other DAs that had come before. There, I believe there were four. Um, and all of the designations remained for the project. However, all of the other details were stricken from that, um, leaving it fairly open um, with the underlying uh, zoning designations. Um, I should also note that during this time, our client has um, widened McMillan Road and 10 Mile Road. The right of way has already been dedicated, so ACHD has the ability to widen the road further and put a stoplight at San Vito Road. Um, they previously widened it to three lanes across the property frontage and reserved uh, room for the signal. Um, so what you can see from this, sorry, and forth here. So essentially what we're doing is we're trying to revise, revise our plan to revert some of the uh, property back to residential as it was originally annexed and zoned in 2005. That what? said, we're still yeah, at a net gain of... can't come off and he's helping like crazy and really hurts him. You're muted, uh, Madam Chair. That's Commissioner Casanelli needs to go on mute. Sorry about that. Ed. Okay. Um, back on here. So in the um, in the original zoning, um, we're, we're still with the rezone, I apologize. Um, the rezone will still have a net increase from the original zoning of the site. We're just reverting some of it back, what we believe 
uh, to be more appropriately the highest and best use of the land in this area. We've tried to lay it out mindfully um, with the line, with um, the spine street in the purple dash line being the buffer between the two uses. Um, and with our rezone, we'll result, it will still result in 54.77 total acres of the original project um, that had been annexed uh, of non-residential, which equates to 2.3 million square feet of commercial land available. Overall, we believe that um, consistent with the other projects that our um, owner has done in this area as part of um, Bridge Tower, we're delivering a quality project. We've, as I mentioned, had several meetings with staff. We appreciate their time and their help um, in developing this plan. Um, again, we intend to do brick paver roads consistent with the other um, other portions uh, and subdivisions that we've done in the area. And, um, and it's our intent to have the same quality of builders uh, continue on. This is really a continuation of um, the, the subdivision to the west. I think I've touched on everything. I know it's late um, for everyone, but I can stand for any questions that you may have. Any questions for the applicant? Madam Chair, this is Commissioner Castanelli. Commissioner Castanelli. First of all, sorry about the uh, interruption there. I didn't realize I wasn't muted and uh, had a bit of an interruption. And Bonnie, you may have touched on it, but what is, what's your plan for the I guess it's the southwest corner. And if you touched on that, my apologies. Uh, Commissioner uh, Castanelli, the southwest corner, um, do you mean the R15 zoning district? Uh, zoning district? No, I'm sorry. Isn't that because isn't that on the southwest corner of, of uh, the intersection there? Isn't that part of your property? Is, is that part of it as well? Do you own that? Uh, yes, that is correct. We. Uh, our client does own the southwest corner of 10 Mile and McMillan. Um, that zoning designation, we're not requesting that as, as a change um, as part of this application. Um, in the previous slides, I was trying to illustrate what the original um, non-residential zoning um, area was of the overall property that was annexed. Um, that corner is vacant and has set vacant. Our owner has um, talked to a couple of different um, commercial users, um, but felt that they weren't the appropriate type for uh, the area. One was a strip, uh, strip retail type user, uh, like a dollar store type um, tenant. And there was a, I, I believe one um, fast food um, operator that had looked at the area and not the, to staff's point, not the high paying jobs that they were looking for. Um, really though, overall with the project um, and Joseph, if you could please um, flip back to a, a couple of slides, um, a little bit, one more, I think. So really when you look at this, you know, the, what was contemplated in this, um, or this rezone that happened in 2008 was a, a pretty an, a ambitious uh, development that really centered around the hospital locating on this site. And that just did not come to fruition. And aside from um, the Northwest corner of the intersection being sold off to Walmart and developed, uh, the rest of the project has, has sat empty. It's, um, you know, land this way and um, our, our client um, has strong relationships with a number of um, high tech companies um, looking in the area. This is not a site that they're interested in. Uh, we believe the highest and best use is to rezone um, some of this, not all of it, 
but some of it back to residential. Joseph, if you could flip ahead um, one more slide, another slide, thank you. And really um, what we'd be doing is, you know, obviously we've got residential to the north, we have residential to the west. Um, if we look along the corridor of 10 Mile, you've got Costco uh, up there along Chinden. Um, we're still re um, retaining some of the commercial along 10 Mile. We think that's appropriate for um, some retail users. And I believe in your packet, there are some concepts of what that retail would look like. Um, but until, until we have a user, the concept plan for the commercial is just that a concept um, and then uh, keeping the R15 as zoning designation um, which would comply with the land use code. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Yes. Sorry. Um, I was hoping to clarify Commissioner Casanelli's question. I wasn't sure if he was referring to the southwest corner of McMillan Tema or the um, the CC zone piece that's shown as neighborhood commercial in this slide. Commissioner Casanelli. Um, I was Did curious you? about because in some of in some of the uh, illustrations there, that southwest corner of McMillan and Ten Mile was was brought into that. Um, and I, it's, I, I understand it's not part of this development, but I didn't know if they had an overall plan to tie that because they do own, uh, this is an extension of the development to the South. So I didn't know if they had a, uh, kind of a, a master plan that tied in that corner as well, even though that's not part of the application we're looking at. So I was just kind of curious on that because some of the slides there showed that as it tied that in um, with some of the some of the renderings. So I was just curious if, if they had if that was if they had plans to, to tie that in um, to, to all that. If that makes sense. But I, I realize that's that's not part of the not really part of the discussion tonight. I just didn't know if they had some plans to tie that in eventually and what that might look like. Understood. Thank you for clarifying, sir. Thank you. Madam Chair. Commissioner Holland. Um, Bonnie, I'm, I'm curious on what efforts were made to, to try and market the property the way that it was established originally in the DA. I, I'm certainly not opposed to seeing, you know, another element of, of residential, but I really liked the concept that was in the DA because I think the one challenge we have in Northwest Meridian is there's a lot of retail potential, but there's not a lot of those higher paying office jobs. And there's not a lot of great places to put office projects or some of those higher employment centers. And so my concern, if we change this all back to residential um, as it's proposed here, we're gonna limit the type of uses that come in in the future um, to retail and maybe some office or daycare centers or senior living complexes or um, have someone come back and say, we wanna see this be multifamily. But I'm just curious on, on what some of the marketing efforts were to try and find another anchor tenant besides the hospital. And, and Commissioner uh, Holland, thank you for that question. Our clients, um, our clients are owners of multiple high-tech professional um, campuses that encompass millions of square feet. We have very strong relationships. We can barely hear you, Bunny, just to let you know. Can you hear me now? That's yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. I'll, uh, our owners of this property are owners of multiple high-tech uh, professional campuses that encompass millions of square feet. Um, they have strong relationships with various tenants that they lease to. Um, these tenants include folks like Oracle, Intel, and Google. And um, I can't speak specifically to some of those conversations, um, but in the conversations with folks and users like that, that are their clients and their tenants, um, and looking at the Valley, I know that um, 
our owners also own another 80 acres um, out on 10 Mile and um, I-84. And so when they've, with their close personal relationships with these folks, brought them out, th this location is not where they're interested in locating. Um, they have tried um, to shop this uh, and work with people that they know um, to get this developed. And it, it's just not a location um, where <coughs> folks want to be. Does that answer your question, Commissioner Holland? It, it does. Um, I, I still have the same concerns <laughs> about rezoning it back to, to re residential and um, you know, the, the way that the site plan is presented, it doesn't look like there's a lot of additional amenities that really make it that exciting of a new residential component to me either. It, it feels like it could be using something that would give it a little bit more flair to match Meridian's you know, desire to be a premier community. Um, it, it, it just feels like we, we have a lot of R4 and I, I know I was reading the Compass report and you know, I'm, I'm making these comments now because I it's it's good to have this conversation. But reading the Compass report, the jobs to housing ratio in this area is 0.3, and a good jobs ha to housing balance is a ratio between one and 1.5. So I do have concerns that we have 2,860 homes already within a mile of the site, but only a thousand jobs within a mile, and most of those jobs are related to retail uses, not high employment needs. So that that's one of my biggest concerns, and I. I'd be interested to know what the economic development or community development department thought about the economic development possibilities of this site um, as well. Madam Chair. Sure, go ahead, Joe. I don't know if that was a question for me or not. Um, <laughs> uh, the, um, the economic development you know, portion of community development does have major concerns with this loss of commercial. Yes, um, I'm not a long range planner, as I'll note that as well. But uh, with discussions with our long range planning team, um, and it's been ongoing with multiple projects, there, there is overall themes in the city that are very worrisome when it comes to applications just like this with with general loss of commercial. Um, there's there's two facets to this. There's what we're seeing now existing zoning where over the last seven, eight years, we've, we're, there's a trend of losing CG specifically, but also just all of the commercial zonings except for maybe the CN and CC district. But both CG and IL have been consistently dropping and as a ratio of you know, per 100 acres of residential, they're both lower than 20 per 100. So, and it's been consistently dropping over the last seven years which is concerning obviously for that tax base that the city wants and needs to thrive. Um, second to that is the looking ahead in a very macro view, 75% um, of the remaining land to be annexed in the city of Meridian is residential according to the future land use map. So 75% of all this remaining land is very likely to be residential. And then of the remaining 25%, a lot of that is mixed use, which again, portions of the mixed use will very likely be residential as well. So then you have a very high chance that the remaining commercial zoning is probably gonna be less than 15% of the remaining land. So a lot of this land that we're rezoning, we're not gonna be able to get back for a very long time. Um, I've heard multiple times from developers that the redevelopment cycle of scraping a building and starting over is somewhere in the 30 year range. So if we have, when we get to homes, that's even longer, but that's for commercial. So when we we're talking about losing this kind of commercial zoning, we're, we're not just picking on this applicant and it's not just with this site. This is something that we're trying to become more and more aware of and bring up with every application that proposes these types of things in order to help plan for the future and not just the housing market demand that we have right now. So um, I, the community development department seconds your concerns, Commissioner Holland. Thank you. I appreciate that, Jill. You're welcome. Any other questions for the applicant? Madam Chair. Commissioner Grove. 
Uh, yeah, I had a question um, that was brought up in a few of the um, public testimony pieces um, regarding um, amenities and the perception of a, a lack of amenities um, or the uh, use of amenities not being adequate for the combined uses uh, of the different subdivisions. Can you address that concern? What we've done is we've looked at this. It, this will all be managed under the same HOA. And our owner has worked with the residents um, to address their concerns to make sure that there are um, adequate amenities. There was a concern about the size of the pool, um, the existing pool not being large enough. Um, our owner has gone ahead and um, stated that he'd be building an additional pool to that. Um, we believe that the rest of the amenities um, throughout the project um, are in compliance and meet the, meet the city's requirements. But there was some back and forth between the residents um, of the existing um, of the existing homes. And so we worked through that with them um, to make sure that we address their concerns. Thanks. Madam Chair. Did, did that answer your question, Commissioner Grove? Oh. For now, I guess, we'll okay. see what the public comment is. Um, I'm guessing there's gonna be some, some feedback on, on that that we'll come back to this again. Okay. Commissioner Yearsley. So as a former parks commissioner, um, the loss of acreage of the, 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 uh, the park really concerns me, especially with the, uh, the size of the lots and the homes that are gonna be put on there with, with no really amenities. I think my, my concern is, um, I, I know overall for the site, it, it, it meets the minimums, but given what we're asking, you know, to get rid of commercial and add more, in my opinion, high density housing. Um, I have really concerns about limiting the, you know, cutting down the open space for, for parks. Can you, can you talk to that? The floor is yours, Bonnie. Um, what we did actually, when the, um, when the subdivision to the west was built, um, there was a line in the field that made sense to oversee that park. Um, so it wasn't really part of the original, uh, of the subdivision to the west, but um, for the sake of maintenance and not being a weed patch, um, the owner went ahead and overseeded that and, and maintained that um, just, just to keep that area clean. So, um, while that area shifts a little bit, it really doesn't, it's, it's not necessarily a loss. It's just um, a reconfiguration of the park that makes sure that both the community to the, to the west and then this new um, plat that we're proposing, um, that all of that open space meets the requirements, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay. Um, thank you, Bonnie. We'll have, uh, we'll have you come back up after the public testimony. All right. Thank you. Adrian, do we have people signed up to testify? Madam Chair. So we have a situation where we did have two people that were in house originally, Janice and Raymond Borcher. They both signed up to testify um, and then they subsequently left but said they'd be on Zoom. Um, I'm thinking it's Mike Borcher here, so I'm going to transfer them over first to see if that's them. I want to give them precedent.
Okay, Mr. Borchard, if you would like to unmute your mic and give your name and address for the record and the floor is yours. Full name, Raymond Michael Borchard, address 5466 North Botticelli Avenue. Okay, thank you. Okay, speak up. Um, we, uh, along with a few of the other uh, existing homeowners are very, very concerned about the um, intrusion into what has been used as a, the park area for quite a few years. Uh, and with the, as expressed by some of your commissioners, uh, the design of the uh, very small lots of uh, 50 by 110, the uh, kind of a row housing effect, uh, the long straight line streets and and uh, no meandering curves so that it's just, uh, it, it, it's almost like an apartment complex. Um, and the lack of, uh, of uh, any playing area for young children. Uh, we have a statement from Bonnie Layton that uh, to address some concerns of uh, overcrowding of the pool right mm -hmm. now, that the developer uh, is toying with the idea of putting in a pool. We've seen no substance to that conversation. We have no proposed location. Uh, you have to, have to share those boundaries, right? Yeah, I, I contacted uh, Matt uh, Munger. Munger, both by phone, leaving a message and also a written letter uh, requesting uh, information about the impact on the park area and the lot placement. Got no response at all. Um, so we're, we're just, we've got questions and they're not being answered. Okay. Uh, when I look at the, the, the 109 lots, I ask, where are people going to park? Okay. Uh, you got a 50 foot opening. If you put in a cut for a two car garage, what's left? Uh, so we have no a play area for children are they going to be playing in the street that's already been packed with uh, some vehicles trying to park there um th th there are a lot of questions here the the layout that uh john uh dodson uh joe dodson excuse me uh, proposed really looked a lot nicer in terms of the street layout and, and getting away from the uh row housing effect that, that I see in this uh, proposed plat map. Uh, and then one other concern is to uh, minimize the height uh, to one story housing uh, on the westerly edge uh, where the uh, houses come up to the uh, um, existing development uh, so that the view shed that does exist can be uh, preserved somewhat. Thank you. Madam Chair, next is Tammy Paxman. Tammy, one moment. Thank you. Hi, Tammy, if you would state your name and address for the record and the floor is yours. I'm Tammy Paxman. I live at 3646 West Balducci Street in Meridian, 83646. And I just wanted to comment that I have been at other community meetings where our neighborhood was together and we asked about more park spaces and um, about the pool was addressed and things like the geese being a problem, things like that. And we had no response at all from the property owners, the development people. So the things that Bonnie was saying, I've seen none of that. And my neighbors have, my neighbors on my particular street were at that meeting too. And they've seen none of that where there's been nothing, where no one's talked to us about really going to do something to make more uh, play areas or more grass or more, a bigger pool. The pool is already very crowded and there's one little basketball thing. It's just, I mean, our neighborhood's a large neighborhood and to crowd in more homes, 
without more facilities and to say they're talking to us when they aren't talking to us, if they're, they're not talking to all of us, if she thinks they're talking to us. And that's all. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you, Tim. Madam Chair, next is Patricia Buckholz. Uh, Patricia, one moment. Okay. Patricia, if you'd like to unmute the floor and give your name and address for the record, the floor is yours. Oh, did we lose? Did we lose Patricia? Madam Chair, I'm looking for. You show back up in the uh, early attendees side. Commissioner Fitzgerald, do you see her? I can't see her. Oh, there she sure. is. Yeah. Sorry, one moment, Patricia. Thanks, you guys. I was scrolling up and down and could not see her. Patricia, you're on mute still. We can see you. <laughs> Um, thank you for your time tonight and thank you for um, bringing me back in. Um, I want to reiterate what some of the other um, residents have stated. There has not been any communication um, as far as the process has gone, as far as the meetings and everything. Bonnie literally filed a notice saying that um, the first um, neighborhood meeting was attended when um, nobody was able to actually attend and she canceled it and said that she was going to reset it and never did. And then we received a city notice. Um, so there's been a lot of errors in the way that the process has come down the line to begin with, as far as the last time that the meeting was set for to be before you guys, there was no proper, um, public notice posted. We did receive, however, um, mailers from the city which we did not receive this time, but a public notice was posted um, out on the lawns. So I don't know exactly what city processes require to do. It's my understanding that public notice is required. Um, as far as what Bonnie stated about communication, we have expressed concerns about the lack of our public area being reduced um, the density of the population for what's used at the pool. Um, we knew that this was going to be developed, but it was our understanding that this development was going to stay consistent with what we had. We purchased half million dollar homes and excess of a half million dollar homes with the idea that that development was going to be in continuation with what our current flow and vibe was. We never purchased this with the idea that we were going to be inundated with apartments behind us or row housing. row housing, patio homes, tiny homes, whatever you want to call them. Um, and so it's kind of disheartening to know that everything is being so misrepresented as far as what's being communicated to us, what was presented to us when we were purchasing these homes. Some people paid additional money to ensure that that park stayed open and not reduced. Um, and I just would really like to hope that you guys are taking a step back and saying, what, how would I feel if this was my home? We understand that Idaho was going to grow and develop. And this is actually the second time that I have moved to Idaho. I've lived here for 11 years between 94 and 2005 and recently moved back in 2018. I also understand that the density of this traffic is also based on 
a report that was generated in 2018 that has no bearing on today's population. The, the growth that has incurred in the Meridian location between 2018 and today is 20 times fold. So I don't think a traffic report and to talk about the density is accurate. I think when you stop and look at how you've traveled down Meridian Road, you're going to build that here on 10 Mile. You're going to build an hour commute. It's already an hour commute. I had to travel from the intersection of Highway 16, is it Highway 16? And Shinden, and go into downtown Boise. And it took me over an hour. And I had, I thought I had appropriately timed myself to make that appointment. And it took over an hour. Every place that you look on every street in Meridian currently is being developed to some level. There is so much growth and density going on in Idaho and I understand the shortage of homes and I understand the need for housing. People aren't moving here to be back in San Diego or San Francisco or these other dense areas where literally it takes an hour to travel seven miles on the freeway. And in Meridian, in Idaho, you can't even get to the freeway. So I just think as a whole, the density that they are putting in this four mile block between 10 Mile and Black Cat and McMillan and Shinden is just insane. It's absolutely over densified. You're still planning to put in two different apartment buildings and from tonight's Patricia, could, could you wrap up your thoughts? We've, we've gone over the three minutes. Yes, I'm sorry, just one second. There's two more developments, apartment complexes that are gonna be put in this area. Like, I just think the density is just in too much. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next is Carrie. Carrie, one moment. Okay, Carrie, if you'd like to unmute your mic um, and give your name and address for the record, the floor is yours. Now can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I'm Carrie Zumersh. I live at 3924 West Wapkut Street. And just um, to tag on to what everybody has said, I wasn't even invited to any um, neighborhood meeting that Bonnie had discussed. I found out for one specific kind of meeting um, from Joseph Dodson that I was out of range. Um, I'm in the first loop right across from that basketball court, um, very close to the pool house. So I just want to want to express that I was not invited to any kind of community meeting to discuss this by Bridge Tower West nor uh, MGM Management Company. And I just wanted to confirm a couple of things for later, seeing Joseph's two maps and then Bonnie's map that we're looking at right now. I just want to confirm that this is the current proposal or is it the line drawing um, on Joseph's, which is much different than one on the left. So I think we should just confirm that because the lot sizes look to be uh, a lot different. The residential density seems to be a lot different. I think when we have a final proposal, it would be very important to take a look at the actual comparative lot sizes and the number of units with the larger lots and kind of like the range of the current, um, the current lots and the current homes as compared to this new development. It, it seems to be quite different, but I think we should take a look at ratio and also numbers 
Um, I love everybody else's concerns. Let's see, um, regarding the pool, yes, I agree. Um, I, per Bonnie's concern that, uh, or Bonnie's, um, how do you say, it? contention or claim that they worked through the concerns and have promised to build another pool. There is nothing, there's no communication. There's no, it's not in this plan. That sort of thing needs to be in writing. I know a lot of my neighbors that have lived here longer have expected a lot of things. And I'm wondering if it's from this kind of um, communication potentially that says one thing or hints at something but doesn't actually deliver. I don't know that. I'm relatively new from 2019. I know that you're still interested and in, you know, very concerned about the commercial element here um, as a group and that's great. Unfortunately, I just can only focus on the residential. And I think that was about it. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, thank you, Carrie. And I think, you know, we're definitely hearing um, a trend that uh, the people uh, testifying this evening are uh, talking about some frustration with communication, the developer and that the second meeting uh, was not held. Um, definitely frustration with the amount of open space uh, in the pool in the area and um, the lack of the commercial. So if we have uh, new comments, that would be great. Uh, so if you still wish- Sorry, no, I don't have any new, but I wasn't even invited to a first meeting. I'm just saying that like others were invited to a meeting. I had received zero invite, like invite to meetings. And I was in communication with Joseph Dodson trying okay. to figure out if I would be, and I never received anything. For one of those, and I can't technically tell you the term of the meeting or what the name of it was, I was considered out of range and I live across from the basketball court. Yeah, thank you, Carrie. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so Adrian, do we have uh, other people wishing to testify? Madam Chair, next is Chris Williams, one moment. Hi, Chris, if you'd like to unmute your mic and give your name and address for the record, the floor is yours. Yes, good evening. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh, Chris Williams, 4476 North Girasolo Avenue, 83646. Mm -hmm. um, couple things I just wanted to clear up as I've been hearing a little bit there. Not that I think that the communication was done very well, if I'm being honest, but there was a second meeting that I did attend neighborhood meeting. I was not invited to it much like everyone else. I saw it on social media and did dive in. Um, one of the things though that Bonnie mentioned earlier when she was speaking is that, she, you know, the, they relayed a lot of the neighborhood concerns. I was part of that meeting, as I said, and, you know, talked about those concerns. The only thing from her email as of December 31st that she emailed us that was in attendance in that meeting was the developer says that they would consider a second pool. And that was it. All the other concerns about green space, you know, additional kids playgrounds, et cetera, was not addressed. Um, they said that they did address with the developer, the small lot sizes, the 50 foot lot sizes, but that's it. They addressed, you know, spoke to the developer. We didn't hear anything else on that. So, yeah, I would like to echo that the communication has been poor. Um, on that, though, a couple other things that a commissioner, I believe it was Holland, said, I agree with the fact of losing our commercial space. I do. Um, you know, it's unfortunate there, you know, hasn't been much interest in there. I think as time goes on, hopefully there will be, maybe if they continue to market it a little bit better. If something does have to go into there, though, and if it's not going to stay commercial, you know, at least the staff concept that we're looking at on the screen on the left here, a little bit better, um, definitely way better, I will say, than what they're proposing. Um, to echo, again, small lot sizes, 50 foot lot sizes, row housing, traffic with all the extra cars, that just doesn't make sense. Um, Again, with the, you know, I understand that the developer, as far as the Bridge Tower West communities, that the developer did do amenities, but they have done very minimal amenities in that. And with such a large community, it would be nice to have more amenities if they want to add more homes. Um, from there, 
everything else has already been discussed. I'm not going to go into that, but definitely would highly suggest that this application be recommended for denial. Maybe go back, redo, hold some neighborhood meetings and figure out a way to maybe expand the invite list in just a small little area. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Chair. Yes, Joe. I apologize. I, I wanted to wait till everybody was all the public was done, but this has come up a few times, and I just want to clarify for the public's benefit and ours that the on the screen right now, but if you don't mind, Madam Chair. Yeah, go ahead. Thanks, Joe. Um, the screen right now, um, the the plan on the left is not mine. That is not a staff plan. That is from the applicant in response to my recommended changes. The one on the right is a very poor rendering that I came up with of what I was more in line with what I was proposing as the changes. Um, the, how do I put this? The, the inclusion of the 55 foot wide lots, um, I mean, 5,500 square foot lots are not that small um, in general. And then the inclusion of the other lots, I guess I'll show the other open space and have a better image of this. These, the change in lot sizes were done because of staff's recommendation. The applicant originally wanted to have all of these, the, you know, 7,000 or more, but because of the future land use designation of mixed use community, you know, we want transitional lot sizes. We don't want two, you know, 2,500 square foot homes abutting CG. It's usually not a good, good mix and there's not a transition and there's no shared space between those types of uses. Um, so that, that is not on the applicant's fault there. That is staff. Staff wants that. And, and that meets a lot of comprehensive plan policies. Um, other than that, the, uh, the park portion that keeps coming up. Um, and again, I'm not speaking on behalf of the applicant. This is just planning's perspective of, of what can and cannot occur here. Um, the park, the existing park, whether whatever is seen visually now, is more than what's supposed to be there. So it can be reduced to 10.2 acres at any time by the applicant, regardless of any additional development going on over here, because that is what was originally approved. So um, the fact that the applicant is only requesting to take 1.6 of the 13 acres out and keep 11.4, which is again, is a whole acre more than what should be there um, is a blessing. I do understand the concerns regarding the amenities and I noted that in my staff report, there need to be some more thoughtful um, explanation of that and inclusion of additional amenities either within this plat and or in the shared park. Uh, but I wanted to clarify some of those points since they keep coming up and make sure that residents understand that the, the plan on the left is not mine. I didn't draw that, but the plan on the right is more in line with what we were referring to. And the transition of lot sizes is, is a staff recommendation for the past six months and not the applicants. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, I think uh, as a commission, we're probably very ready to discuss, you know, the open space in the area um, and the commercial uses and the layout, you know, the differences here. So, um, and it looks like we have several more people who would like to uh, add their comments. So if we have, uh, new ideas, uh, it'd be great. It, um, I think we're getting to a point if we're gonna, uh, if the same comments are coming, I think we understand, um, the comments that have already been brought up. So if you have something new, I'll turn it back to the clerk. Thank you, Madam Chair. Next is Dan Buffham. Buffham, one moment. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, please state your name and address for the record and the floor is yours. Yep, thank you very much. My name is Dan Buffum. I uh, live at 3554 West Balducci Street, um, which is actually the south side of the northern of where this development or the west side or the, the opposite side of where this development is being put. Um, I have several concerns. One I want to start with, I recently moved here um, approximately what, in July 2019. Uh, the reasons I chose this space is I'm a COO of a, uh, a global software consulting firm. I have offices all over the world. Um, and uh, 
One of them we just announced in 2021 that we are going to be opening in the Boise Meridian area. Um, we have to choose Boise, say the word Boise because it's known, you know, as a more dense area. Nobody knows what Meridian is, but I chose this area for two purposes. Well, three, many purposes, actually. Um, one, there was, uh, we were told that it was going to be, you know, quote unquote, the next Eagle. Everybody told us this. It wasn't just coming from my, my salesperson. It was coming from everything I read on Facebook, everything I read from the management, the developer. I did a lot of research on this area. This specific area, I saw that it was going to be built for commercial purposes, and uh, which is great for somebody like me who wants to be within a one mile working area of his um, office. And uh, I don't have to commute all the way down to Boise or even to those up by the freeway, anything like that. Um, but there's nothing that exists for, a, you know, or, or very few things or not that I find appealing, you know, for a 75 to 100 per, uh, employee company uh, full of consultants that I could um, rent here or, you know, or lease. Uh, it's not going to happen. Um, if this doesn't happen, I don't see where it could go. Uh, the other part is, is right across the street, if you guys are going to rezone this to the smaller 50 to 110 space, which, you know, to me, it, and I agree with all of my neighbors um, on every single point, I won't reiterate, I'm going to waste your time on that. But if you make it that dense, and then you take that R15 over here, and you turn that because what's going to stop them saying, oh, well, you know, we're not getting any bites on the senior living either. So we're going to turn those into apartments. You just killed this entire area and you made it one giant living space, which is cool, but there's no workspace. There's no community. There's no money coming in here because there's no place to work. And doing something like that would destroy it. Um, I think, you know, I, I agree with, you know, everything that everybody said. Commissioner Grove said that, you know, he was curious about, you know, the HOA. None of that. I'm not going to reiterate it, but it hasn't happened. Um, and, and to put these 2,000 square foot homes in a house that, you know, I paid a half million dollars for that's now appreciated up to hundred or $650,000, then you're going to go put a smaller home in there. You're, there's no place to, you know, grow for these guys. Um, I'm older, my fiance, we, we, our kids are grown, everything's like that. I don't have it, but I see kids out here, they're playing in the streets, that's cool, but we're having to put signs everywhere there's not enough places for people to go do things they they need we need more amenities we need more open spaces we need green space we need commercial space we need businesses we don't need a thousand more homes or 169 more homes that they're going to take the r15 and in two years from now well that didn't work out we're going to rezone that too i don't think it's right um i that's that's pretty much it. I you know I think you know we already have a lot of traffic. You know my house. I don't. You can't really see it on this plot lap, but my house is the Keystone map on the corner of Vincenza and McMillan. Um, it's the largest lot on this side of the fence, or it was until they built the new new stuff. I already see all night long trucks coming out of Walmart. Invested six thousand dollars in trees in my backyard to try. Hopefully they'll grow big enough and fast enough that I won't have to see these trucks literally driving down my residential street. If you guys keep doing stuff like this, it's just going to make it more dense, more loud, more annoying, and I will move. It, you know, and that's not why I moved. I didn't come here to you know to pick up and go someplace else because somebody changed their mind because somebody's not buying their property based on their plan from whenever. It doesn't work that way. Uh, thank you for your time. Appreciate you listening to me, and that's all I got to say. Cool. Thank you, Mr. Buffum. Mm -hmm. Who do we have next, Adrian? Madam Chair, next is Christian Jensen. Christian, one moment. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Please state your name and address for the record. The floor is yours. Hi, Christian Jensen. I'm at uh, 3833 West Daphne Street. Um, I'm one of the, the loops that would be that would abut the R15 area. Uh, that is um, dedicated. So I um, appreciate all the comments my neighbors made um, and I would reiterate them. My house is one of the smaller houses in the neighborhood and my lot is 9,700 square feet. So to go to 5,500 square feet with all due respect to uh, Joe Dodson, I don't agree with. Um, and I think that that would be um, uh, a, a radical departure from the quality of, of our neighborhood. But I, 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 my real comments are asking for two bits of clarity. One, uh, as I looked at the R15 um, notes in, on your website, um, that is 
as I understood, though, and I'm looking for clarification, that's not apartment buildings. Those are 2,500 square foot or larger and not more than 40 feet tall. And so could I get some clarity on, on what that is? And I know we're not necessarily questioning that piece. And then secondly, there's um, at the top of the R15 space is an area called neighborhood commercial, I believe it was designated as. And I'm not familiar with what that is and what would we expect there um, that would seem a good place for green space and other pool, kids amenities, et cetera. But what exactly would um, they neighborhood me. commercial be? And those are my questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Madam Chair, next we have Curtis Dabb. Curtis, one moment. Okay, Curtis, if you'd like to unmute your mic and give your name and address for the record, the floor is yours. Perfect. My name is Curtis Dabb. I'm at 4335 West Philomena Drive, Meridian. Um, I will be very brief. I am extremely concerned, as well as my wife, of having these smaller lots um, specifically around the density and the population in our schools. We have three children that are currently attending Pleasant View Elementary, which was brand new this past year. And my understanding is that they are already at capacity and or, or very near. Um, I know at Ponderosa previously, they were very much over capacity. And we are excited about the new school, but um, as we continue to grow in this area, just shoving more and more, uh, whether it's apartment complexes or high density home areas, we're just very concerned about the strain that that's putting on already highly populated classroom sizes and, um, and essentially over reaching over capacity in our schools. So. Okay. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you. Madam Chair, next we have John Wyckoff. John, one moment. Okay, John, if you'd like to unmute your mic and give your name and address for the record. The floor is yours. John, if you're talking, we, we're not hearing you. You need to unmute on your side. There you go. And can you give your name and address for the record? Mr. Wyckoff, I'm sorry, we're still not hearing you. I know you're unmuted, but I wonder if your microphone is working. Oh, there we go. Um, Mr. Wyckoff, we're not hearing you. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Okay. Madam Chair, next we have Brian Lenz. Brian, one moment. Okay. Mr. Lenz, if you'd like to unmute your mic, there you go, and give your name and address for the record. Yeah, Brian Lenz, 5362 North Geo Way. Um, I'm kind of learning on the fly a little bit tonight because I wasn't privy to some of the previous meetings either, but uh, I'd just like to echo some of the sentiment of the previous neighbors. 
uh, largely agree with them. One extra thing I wanted to add about the, the green space, the park, a lot of the space that's being encroached upon is the usable space of the park. Much of the park is hilly and sloped down to the pond. The area up there is where, you know, we go to play wiffle ball and my son will hit golf balls around where it's actually flat and that's what will be encroached upon. So that's a consideration anyway, that like, yes, it's acreage and I understand that they can claim it, but um, it would be unfortunate that it is the most usable space that would be lost. I'm also a little bit concerned about drainage and runoff and the impacts that the new houses might have on that. The area is already very marshy. Uh, I don't know if it's due to overwatering or what it is, but um, that was something I would definitely want people to take a look at. The, uh, another concern is the traffic volume and just safety on San Vito. I'd be curious about the, what types of intersections they're gonna put in, particularly with gondola. Um, a light at McMillan would definitely help, but there's already a lot of speeding on that road and the volume is going to be over doubling. So I, that's a concern that I would want to make sure is con, uh, considered and mitigated. Um, and then just the general density and the character of the neighborhood is, it matters, right? This is an extension of our current neighborhood and the HOA. And I feel like this doesn't really fit. Uh, what's proposed due to the density of the row housing, um, the lack of amenities, like the lack of green space and parks and just overall busyness and traffic. So uh, those are my thoughts. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Madam Chair, next we have Richard and Chris Boyle. One moment. Richard and Chris, uh, the floor is yours. It looks like you're unmuted, but if you're speaking, we can't hear you. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Richard Boyle. We are at 5430 North Botticelli Avenue, 83646. Uh, we would back up or do back up to what is the park currently. Uh, one, of the, one of the issues I have with reducing the size of the park um, when we purchased our lot that we built our custom home on, we paid an extra considerable amount in the neighborhood, probably 20000 additional to be backed up to the park area, which now they're trying to reduce in size. So a little, little unhappy that uh, that happened or that they're considering reducing it. Um, as the gentleman prior to me had said, it's really the only area that I see anybody use in the park is the corner that they're considering taking out. Um, I would be, tree. yeah, plus the trees and, and the fact that we've, as homeowners, we've all paid to maintain the whole park, not less one acre of it, however they want to slice it up. Uh, we do approve of the residential area behind us versus commercial. I'd far rather have residential. We planned on having residential like our home. And, and assume that we would have residential behind us. That was what we were told, uh, which is neither here nor there. Uh, the concern as everyone else is the density of it. I would like to see the larger lot sizes so the home values main, are maintained. And then the rest of it's been covered pretty much by everybody else. I will jump on the wagon that there has been very little communication other than one email and one meeting. Well, a meeting that went awry and a second meeting and a single email and, and no no real idea of where this pool might end up being. Um, it's got to service a, an awful lot of homes and there's very little land left in this development to add a pool. 
outside of this park. So I'd be very curious where they plan on adding this this pool and this uh, extended area for open areas. And we're very much opposed to commercial backing up per home because that's not what we purchased here for. Uh, that is all I have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, next we have Jeff DeForest. Jeff, one moment. Hello, can you hear me? Jeff, if you'd like to give your name and address for the record, the floor is yours. Perfect, Jeff DeForest. I'm at 3821 West Riva Capri Street, Meridian, Idaho, 83646. Yeah, I um, appreciate your guys' time here. Um, I know there's a lot of discussion around a lot of common themes. Um, I do second all those. Um, I'm in the first phase of Vinza here. Um, it's that first loop. And the entrance to my neighborhood would uh, look east to the R15 development. Now, some of the plot maps I've seen indicate that there's going to be a turn into that R15 off of San Vito Way. Um, I have an issue with that just because of already the amount of cut through traffic that we encounter on San Vito. Um, we're only going to be adding to that traffic. And quite frankly, I think a lot of that cut through, through traffic is folks making it their way to the south end of Bainbridge neighborhood where they do connect. So I, I do take a lot of issue with where the, how that R15 um, is proposed uh, with it. And this one, I don't know if it's showing it or not. It, the, the one I had looked at previously looked like there was a turn in off of San Vito way there. So I apologize if I'm not up to date here, but the previous one I looked at was. Um, again, I, I think there just needs to be a lot of focus on um, the density. I, I know that's been uh, said a few times here, um, but I, I think the, the thing I want to just, you know, uh, communicate here the most is the, these drawings. I know there's been amendments to them over the last uh, you know, 11, 12 years here since this land has been purchased. But it really feels like um, this new uh, section of the neighborhood is taking a step back um, from what uh, Bridge Tower West looks like and feels like, right? Um, it feels like the developer is trying to backpedal a bit and cover up um, selling that property to Walmart. Um, I don't think the residents of Bridge Tower West should pay for the developer selling that. Now, I do appreciate um, commercial businesses needing to have a home and having a place in our in our community. Um, I understand that, but um, you know these layouts they don't go with the flow that uh, Bridge Tower West currently has, and it just feels really poorly put together, trying to just hide. Uh, the commercial development that's on the other side. Um, I don't know what the right answer is, to be honest with you, but um, I just want to keep that in mind, have you guys keep that in mind that there's just no flow there compared to the rest of the subdivision. And uh, we shouldn't have to pay because there's a Walmart, uh, you know, uh, 300 yards away or across the field. So, um, and then my last point here is because I'm right there at the corner of uh, San Vito and McMillan, basically. I am very concerned about a light being put in at San Vito. Um, that would shine directly into my master bedroom, um, into my dining room. Um, the trees around this area, there's there are plenty. We do appreciate the developer putting the amount of trees they did. However, they are not mature and that those lights are gonna shine straight through my windows day and night. That's all I've got. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Madam Chair, Robin Moore. Robin, one moment. Thank you. Robin, if you'd like to unmute your mic and give your name and address for the record, the floor is yours. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. 
Please my name is sorry. okay. My name is Robin Moore, and I live at three six zero four West Balducci. Um, I've never seen an HOA have a, a separate apartment complex in small housing. I don't understand why they're being included with the HOA unless they're just trying to lump it all together. We don't have enough amenities as it is. The pool is already an issue. Communication is an issue for a. HOA this size, there should be a monthly newsletter. Um, right now, we don't have anything or any communication. The other thing about amenities and upkeep is there's not a single trash can anywhere. There's not a dog poop station. There's a lot of feces all over. There's a lot of trash all over from the construction. And the gardeners, I don't know if they're responsible for it, but they just run the trash over. We're not getting what we have here maintained. And I imagine it'll be cheapened with the apartments. The traffic is out of control as it is. Um, and the schools. So I don't think this seems well thought out. I think it needs to go back to the planning phase. Okay. But I thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Madam Chair, um, Billington is next. Okay. Okay. Shillington, if you would like to unmute your mic and give your name and address for the record, the floor is yours. Shillington, your mic is still muted. I'm sorry, but we can't hear or see you. Adrian, do we have everything done on our side? Madam Chair, I did ask Shillington to unmute. Okay. And it seems not to be having an effect. I can transfer them back over and try again after we give. That's what, yes, please. Okay. I'm chair. Uh, yes, Mr. Grove. Could we remind the um, a, a participant, the attendees that um, if they've spoken once that they can't. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're not, yeah. Um, attendees, if you have your hand raised and you've already spoken, um, that is your, one time to speak. Um, it, it's just one three minute shot here. Madam Chair, I'm going to try John Wyckoff again. He did have technical difficulties earlier. Yes. Hi, Mr. Wyckoff. Oh, no, we cannot hear you. <laughs> Sorry. Well, your, your mic is muted now. One more? No? Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Madam Chair, next would be Oops. an unidentified caller. Yeah. Let's, One try the, let's try the number. Okay, eight six two four six six seven eight seven eight four. If you could give your name and address for the record. And I see your mic is unmuted, but we do not hear you. Hello. There we go. Okay, uh, my name is Bob Geyer, four zero six six, Philomena, and. Uh, listening to the presentations here this evening. Uh, I, I wish there had been uh, more of, of a participation provided to the community. Uh, uh, Commissioner Holland brought up a point about the, uh, the uh, large parcel behind the Walmart that uh, in a perfect world, it would have been a hospital or some sort of professional arts uh, structure in there. I think that would be a, 
a, a great buffer in that area there, as opposed to going to uh, reduced um, or increased density in that area. Uh, one of the neighbors commented about the uh, the marshiness coming from that downslope area down to the existing pool structure, and it and it does get very very marshy in that area. And uh, as far as the school, uh, just uh, hearing from the neighbors and uh, talking to grandkids and whatnot, it's getting pretty packed over there when you check the uh, the density in the classrooms, and uh, that. Uh, uh, next to that, uh, or the access off of McMillan into the neighborhood, um, there should have been a light in there because the uh, the speed coming out of there, uh, somebody's going to get hit, and uh, there's just some, some very fast traffic coming through there. So there's some things that uh, don't need more density at this time because uh, there's some concerns and there's some improvements that just haven't been met yet, and. Uh, I have heard so many times from neighbors in the area about the lack of trash cans and whatnot in the area. And so that uh, uh, neighbor lady, she hit the nail right on the head as far as that. So there's things that have not been taken care of or ignored and to put more density in there right now is not headed in the right direction. Okay. Thank you. And it looks like we have one more. Yes, we'll give Shillington one more try, one moment. Can you guys hear me? There we go. Hi. Name and address for the record. Yep, Scott Shillington, 4174 West Maggio Drive, Radian, Idaho, 83646. So um, I like to back up with all my neighbors had already said uh, with the kind of going in the wrong direction and not being heard. Um, real quick though, for my contribution, I just like to add a sample of what, why I bought in the bridge tower and it kind of goes with their mission statement. And so I'll just kind of share that with you now surrounding it con and contribute enormously to the lives of those who reside in a chosen place. Bridge tower West is a place of classic timelessness from is reminiscent of old world countryside living bridged with the latest in smart home design, planned convenience and community connectivity, emphasizing the idea of a place to live, shop and play. Bridge Tower West is designed for you. To me, we're not hitting the amenities or living up to this mission statement. That's personally why I bought here. Uh, the current model I bought under met those needs. After hearing they're gonna start taking away from the park, bring in the potential apartment complexes and those kind of things don't met, uh, meet the standard of what they're uh, advertising online. I just wanna add my input on that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Adrian, it looks like we have one more. I'm sure that would be a Matthew yeah. Mishler, one yes. moment. Hey. Hi there, can you guys hear me? Yes, Matthew, go ahead. I just want to uh, say thank you to all the neighbors that have stepped up and I agree with every single one of them, what they had said, it's all very true. Um, for me, uh, my family and I moved here to escape the overcrowded cities. Um, we bought here uh, just based on the space of the subdivision. If all this stuff happens, uh, there's gonna be way too much noise, way too much disturbance. Um, the roads, like everybody said, are not prepared for the traffic. Um, this will cause, it's just um, very unfortunate. I hope you guys have listened to everybody what they've said and take that into account. A um, Couple more things though I wanna add is, um, is the R15 gonna be a part of our HOA? is one question. And then also, I think there was a mention of two other apartment complexes. Just curious to know why there's so much development here. Why is it, why is it so, why do you have to make it so dense? Um, and the last thing in closing about the park is that's where a lot of the kids, we have uh, three kids ourselves. 
And that's where the kids go to unwind, go to play. You take that away from them, it's going to be really hurtful. And um, anyway, it's pretty emotional. But that's all I have for you guys. I want to thank you again, Madam Chair and the Commission. And thank you to all the neighbors for stepping up and being here tonight. I know it's late. So thank you again. Okay, thank you. And it looks like we have uh, no one left uh, in the audience who's eligible to uh, speak again. So I think um, we'll bring the applicant back up to address uh, the concerns if there's nobody there in chambers, Commissioner Seal. There's not. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes, Joe. Um, I wanted to touch on a couple of things if that's all right with you before the applicant does just from the city side of things, there were some questions there. You bet. No, thank you, ma'am. Um, just to clarify for the public, the R15 piece on this is, well, first of all, all of this area is already zoned. So any proposed use that is allowed in those zones could be applied for without a public hearing. Um, part of that would be a the multifamily, which is conceptually proposed on this R15 piece, but there it is not part of this application. So I just wanna clarify that for the neighborhood. That would have to go through a conditional use permit and that is not part of this application. Um, uh, secondly, with the McMillan Road, uh, the ACHD representative is not, they do not attend the planning and zoning commission meetings, but they will be at the city council. And before the city council, I can ask to clarify if there is a plan light there. I, don't know that for sure. Um, at least but in regards to the road width of McMillan that the applicant mentioned and other neighbors have mentioned, uh, McMillan is, from my understanding, is never going to be widened to more than what it is because of the constraints of the canal and ditch and the power lines. Um, so that's a constrained corridor because of the increased density and increased number of homes in general out here. So that's uh, just unfortunately what is there. It just would be very, very costly in order to widen that. Um, in addition, the, well, I guess I already touched on that. Yeah, um, again, just wanna reiterate that the, I understand neighbors don't want commercial behind their homes, but the commercial zoning already exists. And therefore with the certificate of zoning compliance, if it's an allowed use, it could already be built here. Um, so I just wanted to reiterate that. After that, I'll, you know, the, Applicants should to answer all the rest of the questions. Okay. All right. Um, Bonnie, do you want to, the floor is yours to answer, respond to the public testimony? Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, uh, members of the commission. Um, appreciate your time again this evening. I think there were um, a number of comments that we would um, like to touch on. Um, and I'll just uh, go through my list here, try to make it um, as quick as possible so we can all uh, get home here. Um, first and foremost, the neighborhood meeting. Yes, we did hold actually two neighborhood meetings. The first one, we did have some technical difficulties. We, we did notice that um, a 500 foot radius that was prior to the zone, uh, the ordinance changing from a 300 to a 500. So we knew that the ordinance was changing. We sent out mailings to, uh, to that increased radius to try to capture people. Um, we did have some technical difficulties. There were a handful of people that were on the call um, at that time. Um, there was a lot of talking over each other and um, a lot of comments that were raised that were really HOA related issues um, and maybe frustrations with their HOA that didn't um, that weren't uh, part of what we were holding the meeting for, which was to discuss this application. And so I had suggested that they reach out to their HOA. So it was unfortunate. We submitted um, the information. Um, staff came back to us, uh, I think it was in December and or November of Joseph. I don't have the date right in front of me. We went ahead and we held a second neighborhood meeting that lasted for over two hours. Uh, both uh, myself and Matt Munger were on that call with a number of the residents. So we tried to, our best to communicate that. Again, there were some issues and frustrations that were brought to light, just as we've heard tonight from the neighbors. 
that are HOA related issues that we suggested that they follow up with the HOA president and um, that we would do our best to pass those concerns on to um, the developer, which we have. Um, in terms of the uh, concerns about the park intrusion and the size of the pool um, and some of those amenities, we did address that um, with the owner and the developer. Um, I would like to say that the pool is under contract to be constructed. Um, the initial plan was to have it in the south um, side of the development. Um, staff has uh, requested that we consider putting that in the north um, side of the development, which we are happy to do. Um, the park intrusion, and again, I guess no good deed goes unpunished sometimes. Um, when you're sold your home, you're sold a copy of the plat. The park was overdeveloped to try to maintain some of those weeds. We're not taking park space away. Um, as Joseph mentioned in his report, we're actually um, increasing the, the park space. Um, it's just going to be reconfigured a little bit. And Joseph, I don't know if you can put that slide up on um, where we can see the line, if, if maybe you could bring that um, slide back up if you're there. Sorry, trying to, give me a second. <laughs> I don't know why it's not working. So Joseph, if you can uh, move the cursor to sort of where that line, where that ground was overbuilt, um, initially can everybody see this yeah that exceeded the actual um required area of the plat um so we've heard those concerns we are um we are including the amenities in the open space we're exceeding um, what we're required to do and uh, doing our best to work with um with the existing residents, I know that the owner has been in touch with, there was one of the neighbors had started a petition about the pool and he had been, he's been in direct uh, contact with her. And again, as I mentioned, the pool is under contract to be constructed. So ho hopefully, um, hopefully that addresses that issue. Um, I do wanna also clarify, there were some comments um, that we shouldn't have to pay for the developer selling property to Walmart. Um, I do wanna be very clear in the history that I presented previously, um, the Walmart property was sold long before, it was sold in 2010 um, from the previous owner. Um, our client and the owner and developer of this project did not own the ground, did not sell it to Walmart. That had been purchased prior to him purchasing the rest of the, the property. So just wanted to be clear on that. Um, and then in terms of the rezone and the loss of commercial and uh, Commissioner Holland to, to your point, and I know this is a um, sort of your area of uh, focus um, professionally. Um, we did receive comments from staff about their concerns. We, we looked at the staff report. Uh, Joseph did forward to me um, in an email um, that uh, ratio that you mentioned that I wasn't sure where the source came from, but it looks like you were referencing it, it's the same one, the non-residential zoning for every hundred acres. So we looked at that and, um, you know, from our client standpoint, this property was zoned commercial since 2008. So that's been for 13 years and nothing has come. And he likes commercial, um, he likes to own commercial and lease it out, that's, that's what he does. Um, but in this location, it seems that um, there's, there's no takers. And so really, what are we losing but vacant ground that has not, um, not had the demand of the market? And so I looked at that and I said, well, you know, I, I wanna understand this a little bit better. So I pulled the 2017 existing conditions report from the city of Meridian. And on page two dash 18, it went through um, different 
square footages and vacancies. And um, back in 2017, there was 3.2 million uh, square feet of office available, according to the report that was um, information from Collier's. Um, in 2019, in Q2, I found a Collier's report that had office at three point, almost 3.6 million. And then in Q4, um, now they've started splitting it out between South and North Meridian. But the total is right at about 6 million square feet. So just from 2017 um, to Q4 of last year, there's been a significant increase. Um, and yet this property has remained vacant and not uh, for the lack of our client touring um, and vetting very um, competent, um, high paying job type employers, um, but this is not where they want to locate. And this, so with that request, we're saying it's, it's vacant land, how much longer should he wait? It's been 13 years of trying to get somebody in place. That hospital went away. I think we, we um, saw earlier this evening some discussion on some commercial um, locating two mile radius from this site, um, 1.3 miles as the bird, as the crow flies. And so um, just really want to put that in, into perspective. Um, we still have the corner, the southwest corner of the intersection that's open. Um, and our client is, <clears throat> um, it's his goal to bring high paying, good quality jobs. Um, not just develop a bunch of strip retail that's going to um, have a couple of tenants in it until they decide they need to move on or they move out of state and then it's, then it's vacant space. He's incentivized to bring high quality uh, tenants to those commercial properties as well. Um, but that's just, that just hasn't come to fruition. So um, there is a demand for some residential. I appreciate Joseph clarifying. Um, for folks and, and for the commission that the density of lots, initially we had planned those to be 70 and 80 foot wide lots. Joseph, I think you have that original plan. Um, and then it, upon feedback from staff is when we went um, to uh, the plan that you see before you that has some 50 and 60 foot wide lots um, to increase the variety um, of uh, of lots in the area and housing options for folks. Um, I did want to touch on the schools. I think the commission, and, and I, I'm not sure folks on the call, but um, in this staff report, <clears throat> it would appear that um, the school capacities are addressed on page three um, in the West Data School District in terms of Pleasant View Elementary um, and currently um, the capacity of that school is 650 students and um, the number of students enrolled is 368. Um, and I can go down the list, but it's in your report um, to save time. The light at San Vito um, and McMillan, I want to clarify, I think Joseph uh, touched on that as well. That was something um, our client initially had wanted to put an entry monument um, at, at that location. And what he was told by ACHD was, well, that's great, you can build it, but when we wanna put a light in there, we'll tear it out. And so um, that area is reserved for a light, but that's per ACHD requirements. It's not um, something that our client had intended on, on having there. Um, and that was something that was part of uh, ACHD's uh, purview. Um, and then also to clarify uh, for folks that the R15 is uh, separate. It's not part of the HOA um, for this subdivision. It would have its own um, setup and HOA it would have its own amenities. It would uh, be run safe and separate um, from the rest of the community. As Joseph mentioned, currently it's zoned R15. Um, any type of use that would want to go in there um, would have to, depending on if it's uh, approved or um, conditionally permitted, would have to go through that approval process. Um, at this time, we're not requesting any change to that zoning. Um, and that's to remain as it was, as it has been rezoned, um, that zoning designation since 2008. 
think I've touched on most of the questions that folks had. Um, if there's something that I've uh, left out, um, I can stand for any last questions. Okay. Any questions from the commissioners for the applicant? Madam Chair. Yeah, Joe. Sorry, one more. My last interruption, I promise. Uh, I just wanted, there was one last question that um, a resident asked regarding the neighborhood commercial and what that means. I didn't touch on it in my presentation either. So um, I thank you for that question. I just want to clarify that that's intended to be a, a very walkable, um, pedestrian friendly type of commercial area with uh, maybe food trucks here and there, some, some plaza space, things like that, that is very neighborhood friendly, not intended for a big box commercial or, or retail like that, just something smaller, more uh, local kind of neighborhood, um, more of a, a Hyde Park feel, but obviously not on that scale. Just a, a condensed version of that with just pedestrian friendly, bicycle friendly. Um, that's what that's intended to be. Okay. Thank you. If I may, uh, Madam Chair, Chairperson, um, sure. Joseph, thank you for um, mentioning that on page 52 of the staff report. I don't know if you have that slide, that conceptual exhibit um, that we had put together presentation. Um, it's, it's the one that's got the elevations. It's in the staff report on page 52. And really, again, um, that neighborhood commercial, um, we understand that times are changing. There's a lot of folks that are working from home, home offices. I think we had um, a gentleman testify, Mr. Mr. Uh, Buffum tonight, talking about owning a uh, global company and working from his home in Meridian. Um, our owner and the builders, uh, the builder team in this uh, community has seen the request for home offices even before the pandemic um, really be a strong, um, strong desire of residents. We have a lot of folks who work from home. And so the neighborhood commercial was really envisioned um, to be a place that would be walkable, that would have outdoor plazas. Again, in your staff report, we've got some examples of what that was envisioned. And, and we really worked with staff to say, how can we develop this to be kind of a center node for folks that they can go get an ice cream. It's close to the park, um, you know, maybe stop there on their way back from uh, getting groceries or um, whatever other retail that might occur um, in the commercial zone that's adjacent to 10 Mile. So um, it is intended to be that. It would uh, complement both the single family residential as well as the R15 residential um, and really provide a good um, community hub and gathering place. Okay. With that, I thank you um, all for your. Oh, oh Ronnie, we lost you. Sorry about that. Um, with that, I just want to thank you all for your time this evening. Um, I know that the uh, that um, our client is really uh, really has an, a desire to continue the quality uh, development, um, the brick paver streets, and uh, continue to add to the city of Meridian uh, quality community for residents and for businesses um, in the area. So. Thank you again for your time this evening. Any other questions for the applicant? Madam Chair. Commissioner Grove. I don't know if this is, if we can ask this now or not, but I'm just kind of getting a sense that um, we could be headed towards a continuance. So before we close the public piece and then have to open it back up, can we ask if she's open to that as an option or? Is yeah, that I, time to ask her. Should I wait to do that? <laughs> um, yeah, I think there's just a lot here. I don't think we would send this. Uh, just my feeling, we wouldn't send this on to council without having some definite drawings come back. Um, I think it's a matter of how much time do we feel that staff and the applicant are going to need. Um, if, if it's the commission's direction to continue this, how much time would you like? 
Madam Chair. Yes, Joe. Um, thank you for wondering that and thinking of my busy schedule. But um, before we get to the continuous, I just wanted to note that it, um, me and well, staff and the applicant in general are, don't agree on the amount of commercial. I think that's pretty clear. I don't know if having an extra two weeks or a month or six weeks to hash that out is, is really going to net anything. I don't know that for sure, um, but I definitely cannot guarantee that. Okay. Um, second to that, uh, I think that some of the other issues brought up by the neighbors and everything else and involving the overall DA, um, those aren't really on the table between the applicant and I, unless the commission wants it to be so. So if there is a continuous, I just ask that it's um, very precise into what it what needs to be revised. And then um, just to give me some direction of, of where, what parts of the project you do support or don't support, just to make sure that if it is continued, I have that guidance with the applicant. Sure. Thank you. Madam Chair. Commissioner Holland. I, I could save my comments towards when we close the, the public hearing um, for comments, but I think it's it's worth having this discussion here. The, the way I see it, where it sits right now, I, I understand where the applicant's coming from and I understand some of what they're they're trying to propose here. But to me, I, I don't think it's the highest and best use of what we could do for this site. And so at a minimum, I, I don't think we could approve this tonight. And I'm at the point where I would, I would almost prefer recommending denial for what Joe just shared that the applicant and staff don't agree on the amount of commercial needed here. And I, well, I don't want to tell them that they need to stick with the original DA and, and try to come up with another site plan that, that works better. I, I do think that going back to the drawing board at some level needs to happen for this project. Um, I think that, you know, I, I would encourage the applicant to reach out to the economic development staff at the city if they haven't done so already to try and market this property. But I'm really, really concerned that you look at the comprehensive plan for the city, this is really an area that we've planned for that higher occupations um, to go into. And I, I know that they haven't had success selling that yet, but the comprehensive plan is a 20 year vision. And so if we eliminate some of those opportunities now, we don't, you don't get to remove houses later. And same thing with park space. If, it's, it's almost a, a challenge and a detriment to them that they overbuilt the park because once you build a park and green space, if you try to take any of that back, residents will always panic and not be content about losing some of the open space that was there, even if it was overbuilt for what was promised. It's, it's hard to take away green space from people. So I, I'm really struggling with this because I, I would like to see it stay. I, I really liked the original DA plan. Um, and would love to see if there's a way to help them at accomplish the original intent of how that was designed. Because I think all of the residential that came in around it was planned for the purpose of knowing that this had a significant portion of commercial plants that didn't need it in other areas. So I, I have some high concerns about the way this came forward. And I, looking at the way this residential is laid out too, um, there's not a lot of special traits to it that make me look at it and say, this is a desirable community to move into. And I, I hate to say that to the applicant, but there's not a, while they've got walkways and pathways and they're connecting to an existing development that has open space, um, there's not anything additional that they're really adding to create a desirable community within this area in, in my perspective. And I, I know that might sound harsh. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. Okay. If there's, um, I think that kind of gives us a direction as far as uh, comments from the applicant and staff on continuance versus other options. So I think if we're ready, uh, we can close the public testimony. If somebody would like to make a motion for H-2020-0108 and move on to deliberation. I move we close the public before hearing. You, before you close the public hearing. Oh. Who's that? It's Bonnie again, sorry, oh. Madam Chairperson. Uh, before you close the public hearing, um, I, I do wanna say, you know, we, we have worked with staff. We've been working back and forth. Um, when we received the staff report um, just on, on Friday, you know, we worked to revise the plan to try to address staff's comments and 
um, to come up with something that was more consistent um, with what um, those comments were, try to reflect what those comments were. And um, I, I think we could get there um, with a little bit more time to um, fine tune um, the plan that you see on the left on the screen and uh, you know, work with uh, Joseph and the rest of the staff to, to, to fine tune that. Okay, so you would prefer continuance over and some more time rather than denial and move on to council. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If yeah, if if we if we can get some direction on that, yeah. Okay. All right. We'll take that under advisement. Um, Commissioner Holland, did you want to continue with your motion? Um. Well, that's a question for the commission if they want to continue the application. I no, I thought we were um, the motion to close the public hearing. Sorry, I would still be inclined to close the public hearing um, because I I'm still leaning towards recommending denial at this point. I while I understand what Joe is trying to propose here and adding a little bit more commercial, I I still have challenges with the way that this this new concept looks, I, I don't think it solves some of the issues that we're looking at. So in my mind, I don't know that time's gonna fix those challenges for me, but if, if others feel that, um, no one has to second my motion. I'm still gonna make the motion to close the public hearing. I'll second that motion. <laughs> it has been moved and seconded to close the public hearing on H-2020-0108. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Comments. <laughs> I've made my note. I'm going to be quiet yeah. for a while. Yeah. Okay. Madam, Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Seal. God, um, I'm right there with Commissioner Holland. I, I mean, you know, I mean, you kind of had me at 65% reduction in commercial space. So, I mean, and, and if that's a sticking point to the whole thing, I just don't know that more time is going to overcome that. So, I mean, this corridor right here is prime space for that. Um, there are businesses popping up all over the place. So, um, I mean, the notion that one big provider is gonna come in here and buy this up and, and uh, make it viable is maybe not gonna happen, but I think that there's plenty of space for um, other things to come in here that were, you know, will be good for our community as far as commercial use. So I just, I. I can't get behind the overall reduction in commercial space. I just, I mean, I, I see where Joe's going with it to try and accommodate what they're trying to, you know, what their vision of it is. Um, but I just think the overall reduction in commercial space is way too much um, for this corridor that it's on. Madam Chair. Yeah, Commissioner Grove. All right, uh, I won't belabor the points too much, but, um, we definitely have, I, I, on the same page as everyone in terms of lack of commercial, like we have to maintain that. Um, we don't, we don't get, we don't get another shot at this. Um, and there's not a lot of other opportunities. Um, it's already in place um, with the comp plan for a reason. Um, so, and then just looking at the, if we even take a, I have problems with it just looking at it from a residential layout standpoint. Um, it, it, even, you know, if the commercial piece was taken out and we, we, we left, you know, as is or whatever, which I don't agree with, obviously, but um, there's just a lack of open space. There's a lack of identity, kind of like as uh, Commissioner Holland was um, saying in terms of the layout. Um, it doesn't feel connected. Um, the rest of the, the subdivision that it's, you know, supposed to be connecting to, um, it feels disjointed in that aspect. Um, and I think that is also kind of, you know, it, I don't know. I have some other concerns that probably don't meet the standards of what we can discuss and not discuss, but um, I, I have a lot of concerns with this. I will say though that I, I like the, what they briefly touched on with the neighborhood commercial. Sounds like a great concept um, of integrating um, some commercial aspects 
into the fabric of the neighborhood. Um, so that that seemed great, um, but there's there's a lot of um, things that need to be addressed, um, and some of them, um, you know, I think could be done with just some better communication um, and and I don't know, having. But for us, we we need to have the long term success of the community in, in mind, and and not the short term success of the 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 project. I guess. Madam Chair, Commissioner Yearsley. So the the nice thing about annexations and rezones is it kind of gives us a an ability to ask for what we want. Um, in, in my opinion, um, listening to the, the homeowners, um, I think, you know, keeping the, the park the way it is, the size it is, is something that we can ask for as part of the rezone. Um, I, I, I do agree with Commissioner Holland that this, this layout is not, it, it doesn't fit, and and I would I would actually be more inclined to continue this because more than likely council is going to remand it back down to us anyways, is my guess. And so why not give the the developer give them some ideas of what we'd like to see, and the staff and see if they could come up with something that we can support. Um, my personal opinion is I'd like to see a little bit more open space. Um, maybe remove some of those lots that are in the, the current park zone right now and, and keep a portion of that park that's still there. Um, come up with a mix that uh, we, we feel good for commercial. And, and I think um, I understand staff wanting to have a transition close to the general commercial, but I think we can actually just leave it as the exterior perimeter with the smaller lots and have the interior and adjacent to the bigger lots be bigger um, and have a shorter transition instead of having just a row of, or a sea of homes. So that would be my recommendation um, to just continue this, to allow them some opportunities to try to work together a little bit more and, and come up with something that, that both of us, that, that all of us could support. Yeah, I think we're, you know, I think the general theme has definitely been consistent. And if I, to continue, the applicant needs to understand that we will stand firm on not having such a reduction in the commercial. Um, otherwise, we would recommend denial so that they need to work with that. And, you know, I agree as the, even the residential part of it that they've proposed in that original one, it, it's not anything I'm excited about and it needs definitely its own open space. And I would almost recommend, you know, some of that open space be in the form of the existing park and not taking the, ex the existing area away and maybe expanding on it and creating, you know, what's left in the residential, something that we can support. Um, uh, Commissioner Fitzgerald or, or did we lose Commissioner Casanelli? I'm here. Um, I, I think you, well, I think I echo a lot of the uh, comments that I think you nailed on the head. I think that the theme is we're taking way too much commercial out of the out of the mix. Um, that that reduction that Commissioner Seal mentioned is just huge. Um, and uh, you know we this is a zone property. It's already set up. This is what they thought was going to be there. The neighbors that built around it. That's we we talk a lot about certainty and 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 what they expected to be there. And they're shifting gears significantly. And I know that Bonnie's comment about no deed goes unpunished, but when you build a park and people are using it and then they go and turn it into homes, 
they that is a bait and switch. I mean, I, it just is. Um, whether it's on a plat or not, the neighborhood feels like it, they got something taken away from them. And so, unfortunately, that's the situation we're dealing with now. And I think that's it's a rough gig. Um, I, I understand it, but I, I do agree with the majority of your comments. I, Commissioner Yearsley and I kind of were on the same page. I think um, we, we have an opportunity to say exactly what we want. And if they don't get that, then I think the denial comes uh, quickly following afterward. Uh, it doesn't have a very far leap to get there. But knowing that the feeling of the commission probably would give them an impetus to try to work out the, the balance that Joe's looking for. So that would be my only comment. Madam Chair. Mr. Holland. Yeah, for me, if, if we were going to continue it, I would have to see a radically redesigned site plan. <laughs> and I don't know if it's better for them to just come back with a new application in that case, or whether it's better to keep this moving forward and seeing if, if they could come back with something different for us. But I would agree that I think at a minimum, they would need to keep the open space that was there. Um, even though, again, they're they, they overbuilt the park. I, it's for the same reason that Commissioner Fitzgerald just explained. I, I think you can't really take that amenity away. And I think you've got a great opportunity with where the commercial integrates with that open space that exists right now. You could do a really cool neighborhood commercial that would tie in with the open space. So if you want to be a premier living community um, that does attract that other commercial user, have some really cool plaza spaces that open up into that open park. And then you've got the walkability and the neighborhood connections that, I mean, I would be excited to live next to that if I could go play with my kids in the park and walk next door and have a cup of coffee and still be really close to my kids and, and be able to have that work-life integration. Or, you know, if they want to add some residential ones, this would be a great spot for that live work unit, where if they want to do a couple stories and have some apartments on top and have the 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 cool frontage i know that that's a a trendy thing and it's maybe a little more expensive to do but i think they have a lot of opportunities still for this site so i'm still leaning towards denial a little bit because i'm, I'm afraid that we're going to get back a rendition of what's in front of us right here and it's not going to be much better than what we're looking at and that's what i'm concerned about if we continue it madam chair madam chair uh, commissioner grove go ahead uh, I'm kind of leaning towards what uh, Commissioner Holland said. Um, I, f I feel like they have had really good um, resident feedback um, through this process, you know, tonight and with written comments. They, they have an engaged um, group next to them. Um, and I feel like they could really harness some of that to, to build out, like, especially some of the, you know, neighborhood commercial pieces of this or the mixed use pieces that could potentially go in um, and make it into something that more people could get behind. Okay. Commissioner Castanelli. Yes, I guess I was, uh, I was muted. Um, I, I'm, I definitely either want to see a continuance or, or denial, which I don't know which one's going to be the best here, but just, my thoughts and comments. I think this was. I think this parcel was uh, was was changed on the or updated on what I want to say on the future land use map based on the previous um, development agreement and plans that were submitted back in 2008. I think was the date there. Um, prior to that, it was it was leaning more towards residential. But so I don't want to penalize him for that necessarily, even though it is what it is. But in all actuality, it's it's a mixed use community. And I don't think that necessarily means that they've got to bring in a, you know, a, 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 some high tech uh, employer, and make this a tech center or something. I think I mean, we've got the 10 mile interchange. We've got what we discussed earlier tonight of two medical centers across the highway from each other, just a mile and a half away. But I, I do think they're missing the mark on on that the concept of mixed use community. And I don't necessarily think that we have to tie them to a number of how much commercial we're losing or something. I just want to see uh, I want to see something that's that 
with all that acreage that they've got there, something that will blow us away in terms of putting together a real neat concept. I, I don't want to say it has to look like uh, El Dorado or, or Silverwood. I think it was Silverwood, Silver, whatever. Um, it doesn't have to look like that, but it's got to be something that ties in the, the components of a mixed use community, which is what it is. It does not have to, I, I'm not, I don't want a, a hard defined commercial area necessarily that says, okay, this is a, you know, we got a little tech center over here and we got, we've got some retail here, whatever it is, but I, I just don't see it. And then I have an issue too with the, um, that, that all the streets are, uh, they're, they're, they're parallel uh, and perpendicular streets there. I want to see some uh, like through bridge tower and, in the homes in the areas around it. I want to see some curvature in the streets and uh, I want to see something a little, a little different. It just, you look at it and, and it's kind of blah, especially when compared to what's next to it. And then uh, the other comment, and this has been brought up, is definitely open space. I mean, they're hitting it right now at 10%. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, with this many acres, and I realize it's part of other developments too, but um, I want to see more uh, more open space in there too. I mean, I think I'm speaking for all of us here, and, and several of you have made the comment. When you come in at the minimum, we're not impressed. Um, you, you know, give us more. Give us 12%, 14%, whatever it is, I get the, I get the, the minimum is 10%, but you know, let's, let's, let's have something more. I just, with the acreage that's in there, um, there's really, I think some cool things that can be done with this, with this property. I don't necessarily share the same thoughts as far as having a hard line number with the X amount has to be commercial or something. But I do think that you know, along that could you got you got Walmart on one end and you got Costco on the other. Let's there's just some I think there's some really neat things you can do that would make it a vibrant little center up there. And it's this isn't it. So, uh, but I don't I don't have the answer if it's um, I think uh, I think Commissioner usually said if we if we deny it. Council is just going to remand it back to us. And we're going to be in the same spot in in four months. Um, so I don't know what the answer is on that one, if it's continue or deny. But I, I, it needs a lot of work. I I think if we recommend denial and it goes to council and council thinks that there's some saving grace with it and they do remand it back to us, it's almost about the same as continuing it regardless. But it might give them more time to get some extra feedback from council on and direction. So I'm going to throw out a motion and see if it goes somewhere. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I after hearing all staff uh, applicant and public testimony, I move to recommend denial of um, the Vincenza North Subdivision H-2020-0108 uh, for the reason that it doesn't comply with the intent of the comprehensive plan in reducing the commercial, that there were concerns from the commission about the integration of the residential and compatibility with the neighboring structures, that there was a loss in some of the existing open space and that uh, the commission would have liked to have seen better mixed use development um, in, in the plan. And I, I think that's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> Unless there's other things I need to include in my reasonings. I'll second that. It has been moved and seconded to recommend denial of H-2020-0108. All those in favor of denial, say aye. 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 All those against denial, say nay. Nay. Mo Sorry. Yep. Motion to recommend denial is approved. Madam Chair, do we need to do roll call on that one? Yeah, just for the record, was that Commissioner uh, Fitzgerald? Uh, no, I believe it was Commissioner Yearsley that had the nay. Correct That's me correct. if I'm wrong. That was Commissioner Yearsley. 
Yeah. I voted yes. So one nay, the rest affirmative. I'm not going to be here to watch you guys deal either way. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, short timer. Madam, Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner Casnelli. Um, just, uh, I know we've got one more on the docket. I need to, um, I need to take care of something and, and probably will need to, uh, just, uh, mute my phone and walk away here for about 10 minutes. Okay. Um, I think at the minimum, we're going to probably need to take a break, but I know there's been, uh, support of staff and this commission to have an end time. So do we want to take a break or do I have a motion to continue the next item to the next meeting? Madam Chair. Always my biggest concern whenever we get to 11 o'clock is that if there were people who wanted to share public testimony by 11 o'clock, they fade out. And so I feel like we're not being as transparent if we start an application at 11 p.m. I would be in favor of continuing um, that application, but I know that the applicants also hung with us probably through this point in time too. So I, I sympathize with that as well. But I'll do whatever the commission wants and I will rally on if we decide to stay with it. Madam Chair. Matt. Okay, so the question I would have to that too is when, when is the next available if we do continue it? Because it is late. <laughs> yeah. Joe, do you sure. have, uh, I think um, the next, is the next one pretty full? What do we got? Madam Chair, this is Adrian. Uh, there are currently five hearings scheduled for February 4th. There are currently two hearings scheduled for February 18th. Okay. Well, well those are mine already. <laughs> okay. So, Joe, are you comfortable with moving this one to the next meeting? And then if we have to bump whatever's last on that one to the following, I mean, I know it gets to be a vicious cycle, but. Madam Chair, um, I, on that question, I'll default to my, my boss man, Bill, um, Mr. Parsons. Um, I will say that the next application is not nearly as contentious. There was only one piece of public testimony provided. Um, so I, if we do move forward, I, I don't, I understand Commissioner Holland's point 100%. Um, I don't know if that would apply in this case, but you know, I could be very wrong. Maybe there's a hundred people that want to testify. Madam Chair, I just see 22 participants still in the attendee panel. That's what I worry about. Yeah, I can't see that panel. That's not fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's still quite a list. And they, a lot of them look like new names understood that was from the last one so um i would think it would be most fair i mean to if they if we did continue it to move it to the next meeting at the top of the agenda no so i'm open to motions or suggestions on a five minute break or a motion <laughs> I think Commissioner Fitzgerald needs some practice making motions. I made a motion earlier, dang it. I'm just giving you your last opportunities. We're gonna miss you. <laughs> um, Madam Chair, I, I, this one, it's always hard because I, I don't want to, uh, people who've hung with us for a long time, but I don't think this one's gonna be as cut and dry as it may appear. Um, yeah. So I, I think we may be here to one, um, just, and that's my concern uh, for you guys and your families and everybody involved. Um, we get a little punchy at when we hit about midnight um, and I'm not sure we make good decisions then or not. So um, I would be, I mean, not because I'm not gonna be here the next meeting, but um, <laughs> I'm okay if we, Want to continue it? You put it at the top of the of the list. The next meeting, I mean, it makes sense, but um, it's completely up to the team that has to take it on because I don't want to be the person who's deciding that. But I think long days uh, start getting yeah uh, difficult. Madam, Madam Chair, I know we've had a lot of support from staff to end them at a reasonable hour. Yep. 
Madam Chair. Mr. Holland. I'm going to jump in and make a motion. Okay. Um, I move to continue with public hearing for Aviator Subdivision H-2020-0111 by the land group, the hearing date February 4th, um, for the reason that the hearing ran long and we want to make sure we get uh, adequate opportunity to the public to participate and make sound decisions for the motion. and that we would put that at the first agenda item of that meeting. Second. Madam yes. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Castanelli. Do we need to just get the applicant up and check and confirm that that date will work with them before we Do we need to do that or can we move forward? Um, you could do it if you'd like. Um, I don't know if the applicant is remote or in person. It should be remote. Chair, one moment. Brady, I'm going to transfer you over. Madam Chair, I've, I'm transferring, excuse me, Brady Lasher and Kristen McNeil of the Land Group. We appreciate you guys hanging with us, but I, we definitely want to give you the attention you're due. Um, and I, we hate to start this and have it need an hour or two. Um, our, our, the motion has been made and we would prefer to uh, continue this to the top of the agenda on February 4th. Madam Commissioner and uh, staff and um, members of the commission, uh, this is Kristen McNeil with the Land Group. And yes, of course, we'd love to present tonight, but we understand and we are available for the next date and appreciate um, being offered the opportunity to be the first on the agenda item, uh, first agenda item there. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded to continue item H-2020-0111 uh, to the hearing date of February 4th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, I believe uh, before we have our last motion, uh, Bill, did you have some uh, announcements and things you wanted to say? Oh, I'm, I'm always willing to talk to all of you as you know. Uh, but uh, I did want to extend my appreciation to you, Ryan. Um, unfortunately, due to these this, uh, this COVID situation that we're all dealing with, we couldn't have a formal, a proper send off for you, but I did want to uh, send my appreciation to you. Um, I it just, it seemed like yesterday you and I were in that conference room and I was there training, Caleb and I were training you on your duties as a commissioner. And yeah. here we are several years later and, and it's time for you to retire <laughs> <laughs> as chairman and as a commissioner, but I want you to know that the team really appreciated your insight throughout the years and you're going to be sorely missed. And I hope when we're done and past this, I have your email address. I will look you up and we will get caught up and yes. I'll send you off in a proper format. <laughs> beer, I, I we don't have beer at that time. Yes. I completely, completely second that bill. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate your service, sir. Well, it's been a pleasure. You, Thank you for everything. We greatly appreciate the opportunity and I'll miss all of you. I'll definitely come say hi. Thank you, sir. Uh, is Adrian on? I am. Adrian, um, do, you, do you wish to discuss the certificate of service for Ryan? I am because of your years of service that you've uh, given to the city of Meridian, the mayor's office has prepared a certificate of service for you um, oh. that we'd like to give you. Um, if you prefer that I mail it to you, I'm happy to do that. 
along with your, I have your nameplate here too, so you might want to keep that for commemorative <laughs> purposes. <laughs> um, but yes. I, I'll have it in the city clerk's office too, but if you prefer I mail it, I'm happy to do that as well. I appreciate it. I can come by and grab it. That sounds good. We'll have it for you in the clerk's office whenever you're ready to pick it up. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for all. The team has been amazing. I can't tell you how much it has been a pleasure to work with everybody. So Bill, Joe, Sonia, Andrea, Adrian, thank you guys for everything. It's been a blast. And Chris, you know you're not on here, but you're probably somewhere. Absolutely. And tell Caleb, we appreciate everything. So thank you. Thank you, Ryan. I'll do thank best you, Ryan. to you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, thank you. The honor of the final motion goes to? Ryan. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move we adjourn. I like the fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'll second that. <laughs> to my fellow commissioners, I love you all. Thanks for all the fun and it's been a blast. Carry on and do good work. All right. It has been Thanks, moved Ryan. to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ryan, it's been fun. It has been. It's been a good day. It's been a good day. It's been a good day. Take it easy, gentlemen and ladies, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>